Into the day with the dawn ringing in my ears Oh well, I turn to my TV show No better way, I gotta get myself into gear Let's go, oh And I feel good today With my wake up in the morning espresso I feel good today It's my feel good breakfast show Lovely, oh, lovely. How good does that smell, hey? Oh, good morning, Ooh. thank you very much for joining us. The start of a brand new day. Hey, it's Wednesday. It is a and Wednesday, we're live, buddy. we're large and in charge. Welcome to it. Uh, my name is Katla Khamabot. My name is Graham Richards, and I'm being overpowered by the smells of, of cinnamon and vanilla. <laughs> As you can see, lots going on in our kitchen this morning. Absolutely. A bit of a cold one, a chilly one. I'm going to give myself a nice little warm filly element. Preparing yeah. for some of our dishes that we'll be making today, and uh, these among them indeed. So these are, we are making, and this is quite free, we are making uh, uh, tortillas, okay, to eat a salsa, but the salsa is made out of strawberries. Oh, that was Get out. Good. I was Get candy. Out, Get out. <laughs> uh, so we're going to have, have a lot of fun. We've been cooking with tortillas a lot for some reason, but uh, it is very exciting. Um, and putting a very different spin on things this morning. How's um, your warm filler going? Uh, of course, I didn't even put it in the microwave, dude. Um, <laughs> oh, it's that kind no. of... <laughs> it's that That's kind of shocking. <laughs> oh, my word. Anyway, listen, some of you out there may be wondering where in the world Kutle is this morning. Yeah. Well, um, she, she'll be joining us from Krugersdorp in Gauteng, she pays the Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve a visit. A wonderful place indeed there. Um, and she'll be exploring all that the Wildlife uh, Centre has to offer. And uh, we're excited to see what it's all, what, what, what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, I can't tell you how much I've been hungering, lusting after getting out into the bush at the moment. Oh, yeah? Just to experience that, see animals. I've been posting all these pictures of beautiful animals. Um, I'm missing it so much. So have I'm, you been I'm watching Safari Live on SABC3? I have Three? actually. I've yeah? been watching it. Uh, Linz, when I get home, She's like, got it on. Um, so I, I'm going to live vicariously through Kutle this morning. But so good that we can start to venture out and safely at that. So join us for a, a wild exploration today. Absolutely. Cheers, While we start our wild Wednesday, let's say hello to the rest of the team. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's really good, eh? <laughs> good morning, boys. Looks like it's a rough morning that side. But of course, Jamie Donald reporting live for duty on this Wednesday morning. Of course. Good morning, guys. My name is Ryle. Good morning. So excited to deliver you with all the magic of this Wednesday episode that we have. Yes. yes, you take us to a Francois Pinar inspired work, and I'm very excited yeah, for that. We just need resistant, resistant bands. Take us through it. What is what so? Is yeah, you're using resistance bands. It's always been a popular one. I think everybody at home is always commenting on how much they love that. So we're going to do an inspired workout, working on the legs, working on that pelvic pelvic girdle and the glutes, which I know the ladies Ooh, are always yes. loving too. So stay tuned for that one, Jamie. And I are going to take you through your paces. Well, here's the thing. You know what my biggest fear in life is? Mm? Is marrying into a family that actually does like marathons for a living. Or like wakes up on a Saturday morning at four o'clock. It's like, hey, let's go hike. Like that is my biggest fear in life. Like you don't understand right now. Wow. I mean, look, people run, Jamie. People do it's, these it's things. The they actually enjoy it as well. Like they look forward to waking up early and running. And speaking of which, we've got some epic, epic marathon uh, events actually coming up, which we're going to talk to you guys about later in the show, which I know you are going to love. And with that theme, we're asking you all at home, what's the longest distance that you have ever completed? Be it a run, a sprint, a jog. How many Ks have you clocked up in total in one day? What's that highest total? Let us know. And how did you do it as well? Share those pictures with our expressoshow.com and of course our social media channels. That's Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Of course, we want to see how far you've been trekking. What's that face for? I just want to know why, but also give me maybe some inspiration as to why I need to run. The only time I'm running is when I'm late for the show or there's a fine brother on the other side of the studio. I don't know, but listen, that fine brother is about to tell us the headlines of the news. Let's find it out. Well, it's just gone four minutes past six o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a first look at those news headlines. On the national news front, South Africa's economy is likely to contract by 7.2% this year due to the impact of COVID-19 and growing debt repayments will hamper its recovery, the International Monetary Fund said yesterday. Now, the IMF approved 70 billion rand in emergency financing on Monday. Meanwhile, National Treasury said in a radio interview yesterday that the multi-billion rand loan had not jeopardized South Africa's sovereignty and that the loan was negotiated carefully. It was stated that the country would be able to honour the conditions attached to the deal. 
Another new South African national parks has issued a tender to have hundreds of animals culled across several national parks in the country. This, in these include the Addo and Karoo national parks. Now the culling will include ostrich, gemsbok, springbok, waterbuck, kudu, zebra, fallow deer and warthog. Dr. Lutando Zibi, executive manager of conservation services at Sand Parks, says the culling is necessary to improve the resilience of ecosystems and biodiversity, especially in some of the smaller parks. Sand Parks has made it clear that trophy hunters are not invited to apply. On the international news front, nearly 3 billion animals either perished or were displaced by bushfires in Australia in 2019 and 2020, according to research by Worldwide Fund for Nature. Now, it is said that 143 mammals, 2.5 billion reptiles, 180 million birds and 51 million frogs were impacted by the country's worst bushfires in decades, preceded by years of drought. Now, this is, a trip, this is triple its estimates at the time the fires were still blazing. The organization said the fires rank as one of the world's worst wildlife disasters in modern history. Zimbabwe investigative journalist Hopewell Chinono remains in police custody after his bail hearing has been postponed twice. Now he's to appear in court again on the 7th of August. Chinono's arrest came a few weeks after he exposed a 60 million US dollar COVID-19 procurement scandal which implicated high-ranking government officials. He has been accused of supporting calls for anti-government protests in his reporting and on social media posts. Organizations such as the Southern African Human Rights Defenders Network and a coalition of nine media organizations have called for his immediate release. And now exciting news regarding a female killer whale. Talika, the killer whale that captured the world's attention in August of 2018 when she was spotted carrying and grieving her dead newborn calf for 17 days while she swam 1,600 kilometers, is pregnant again. Now at the time, scientists said that uh, they'd seen mother whales carrying dead babies briefly for parts of a day, but never for so long. Her morning time was a record. Scientists in Washington who made the discovery of Talika's pregnancy Pregnancy while recording home drone images of southern resident killer whales uh, are elated and it's only the first in three years among the whales. Talika is part of a community of some 72 whales and they're frequently encountered off Vancouver Island in Canada and in inland marine waters of Washington state. Ken Balcom, senior scientist at the Center for Whale Research, says failures to reproduce are linked to nutrition and access to Chinook salmon, which has drastically declined. Uh, in recent years. Scientists have warned vessels to stay clear of the whales and grant them space. Canada and the United States list the southern resident killer whales as endangered. And finally, taking a quick glimpse into the world of entertainment, since February, reports have been swirling about British actress Sophie Turner's growing baby bump. And while she and her husband, American musician Joe Jonas, uh, never confirmed their pregnancy and kept it out of the spotlight, they have now happily confirmed the birth of their new baby. Now, they welcomed a baby girl named Willa last Wednesday, the 22nd of July in LA, and are reportedly over the moon. A source says the couple is already obsessed and can't stop cooing about their new addition. They added, the couple is taking time to enjoy this special moment and have only shared the news and updates with family and friends. With the pandemic, of course, Joe and Sophie have been very cautious about who is around them and their little girl. And we hope the young family is enjoying their safe bubble of love at this point. Well, that's the news at 6 o'clock. We'll have another report at 7. Right now, here's a first look at the sporting headlines with Graham. Thanks so much, Kat. Let's kick it off with cricket and a momentous um, a new occasion for Stuart Broad. He picked up his 500th test wicket as England claimed a 269-run win over the West Indies in that third and final test to walk away as the series winners at the Emirates Old Trafford in Manchester. Broad, who was named man of the match understandably on the day, is only the seventh bowler and fourth paceman to reach this milestone. An incredible achievement. The West Indies were chasing down 399 for the win but collapsed at 129 runs in just 37.1 overs. Then on to rugby news. British media yesterday reported that Fiji and 2019 Rugby World Cup host Japan will join the Six Nations sides for an eight-team tournament later this year. The two nations will join England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, France and Italy for a tournament starting on the 14th of November, two weeks after the final round of the 2020 Six Nations competition. They'll celebrate 
any live sport. And then on to football, newly crowned La Liga champions Real Madrid yesterday announced that Spanish-born striker Mariano Diaz has tested positive for COVID-19. The 26-year-old is said to be in perfect health and has been uh, complying to the self-isolation rules at home. Los Blancos saw one at the Spanish League earlier this month and will be back in action next week for their UEFA Champions League round of 16 time. That's where we leave our sport for now. Let's take a look at the weather. A very good morning to you, South Africa. As we start the brand new day, here are some sunrise pictures we have received from some of our viewers from across the country. Now we start off with Luandile Goodman-Tina's sunrise picture of a vivid sun with splashes of orange tints in the sky. Now he captured it in Motherwell in the friendly city of Port Elizabeth. Now Port Elizabeth, your temperatures for the day jump from a low of 11 degrees, reaching a high of 19. We head on over to KZN with Kennedy Matkawe's a picture of a very multi-hued horizon captured in Port Shepstone. Now mostly sunny day coming your way at a maximum of 22 degrees. Thank you to both Luandile and Kennedy for your sunrise pictures. I hope you have a great morning further. Now, inclement weather continues to cause havoc in the Middle East as four days of non-stop torrential rains are causing floods, claiming dozens of lives and destroying hundreds of homes in war-torn Yemen. Now, the country's rainy season, which usually occurs from May to September, has been unusually heavy this year. In addition to adverse weather, the country is now also dealing with cholera as well as COVID-19. The UN estimates 24 million Yemens, that is more than 80% of the population, depend on some form form of humanitarian aid or protection for survival. Now bringing it back home, according to the South African Weather Service, it is going to be a fine and cool day across the country, starting off with Polokwane, your lowest four, peaking at 20 degrees. Umbombela, your range is 9 to 28 degrees. For you, Pretoria, your minimum temperature is peaking through at a lower four and a maximum of 21. Johannesburg, 418. Mahikeng, 221. And then Klerkstorp coming through with a minimum temperature of two, peaking at 20 degrees. Kimberley, 222. Bloemfontein, minus 1, peaking at 20. Richards Bay, ranging from 12 to 26 degrees. And then Peter Madsburg, uh, coming through with a low of 7 and a high of 25. If you do find yourself in South Africa's playground today, Durban, your low is 11 with a high of 25. Umtata, 5, 22. East London coming through with a minimum temperature of 9 and a maximum of 20. And then we also find Craddock with a, a minimum temperature of 0, peaking at 23 degrees. If you find yourself in the friendly city of Port Elizabeth, your range is 7 to 18 degrees, George 9, 18. And of course, if you find yourself in the mother city, Cape Town today, your minimum temperature is 12, peaking at 20 with a 25% chance of rain. Worcester 4, 18. Sutherland with minus 4, peaking at 15. And then last but definitely not least, Uppington, your low is 6, peaking at 25. But of course, whatever the weather, wherever you find yourself on this Wednesday, make sure to keep it locked right here on your feel good breakfast show yep it is locked in <laughs> it is feeling so good thank you very much for starting the day off with us now a little bit later on in the show we'll be connecting with former springbok captain and chairman of the cape town marathon Francois Pinar, about how the race is still going ahead virtually mm. this october which is exciting it is exciting i got to chat to him and it's really cool to see how they're involving everybody and bringing the gears to this event so it's going to be a fun one it's going to be awesome and we had the radical transformation the way that we train for our favorite competitive sports too cat yeah so obviously events this year are, are changing all over the show and there may be uh, a chance to make people lose the motivation to push hard and even participate when you don't have all that energy and all that vibe in these events because it's kind of just not there but we have a solution for you guys but uh, the fact is that there's still an option of course and our passions are able to engage and it's in able to encourage us enough and having that competitive spirit is something worth uh, fostering during these incredible times. Absolutely. Uh, now American basketball coach Bobby Knight who did his work with a fierce passion had the following words to share. He said, the key is not to the will to win. Everybody has that. It is the will to prepare to win that is important. Mm, I think it's so true. Failure to prepare is preparing to fail, Kat. Hey, hey. <laughs> listen, talking about preparation to win uh, while we are in the throes of what's happening in world rugby on Southern Hemisphere rugby, I'd like to ask the producers to just go back to that epic picture of Fran Tropina on the rugby field against the All Blacks. And as we go into this ad break, I want to remind all of our New Zealand friends 
Take a look at that picture, New Zealand friends. Let that sink in. <laughs> Remember that day. Remember that day. <laughs> Warm up your winter with Super M by winning your share of 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes. Whether you need a morning pick-me-up, a midnight snack, or a study cram filler, buy any Super M, follow Super M SA on Instagram or Facebook, upload a photo of you enjoying a warmed-up Super M, and use the hashtag warm-up filler to stand a chance of winning your share of that 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Happy birthday to you. Ah, uh, now we're awake. Yes. Welcome to it. Welcome back to your live kickstart to a brand new day. And maybe it's the best day ever because it's your birthday today. Happy birthday. If it is, let's see if someone loves you enough to send through a message. So that time of the day where we celebrate all of our birthdays with our loved and loyal viewers. But of course, you get to share this birthday with someone quite cool. In fact, he's unbelievably talented looking at his CV. The American football quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys of the National Football League. It is Dak Prescott, who turns 27 years old. So um, talk about um, accolades. He was the fourth rookie quarterback to open the season as a starter in franchise history. Okay, so that's quite a big honor right there. The first to win the AP Offensive Rookie of the Year after throwing for 23 touchdowns and just four interceptions. I don't know I don't know if that's good or bad. I'm assuming that's really, really, I'm really good. I'm also just assuming it's okay, very good. Okay, I'm going to assume that's just amazing. Um, 
Um, and that was for the Dallas Cowboys in a 13 and 3 record. Um, so he's, his money well spent. And he recently earned his spot in the NFL Top 100 list at just 27. That's pretty impressive. So, Dak, congratulations, man, on that. Absolutely. All your achievements. I'm sure living yeah. large and in charge and having a wonderful birthday. Oh, man. And now it's time to wish you, uh, our lucky viewers at home, a happy birthday. This one reads, happy 24th birthday to Lutho Jaji. I'm so happy for what you're doing and the person you have become. May you stay blessed and get everything new on the special birthday of yours. Happy birthday, beautiful. Have a lovely day. And this comes from Major. And then the next one is for Taylor. Happy 12th birthday to our wonderful, precious and very caring baby girl, Taylor Nicole Marshall. We wish you a great day filled with love, joy, light and happiness. Stay as beautiful as you are, Taylor. We love you to the moon and back. And this comes from Mommy, Cammy, Chloe and Riley. I feel the love there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, it's a sweet message then. Eli is also celebrating a birthday. Our amazing little boy, Eli Davids, turns a year older than last year. Um, may you grow to have the obedience of Noah, the faith of Abraham, the passion of David, and the strength of Samson. May you grow to be wise like Solomon and bold like Stephen and forgiving like Joseph. Happy birthday to you. We love you, boy. And that's from our puppy, from Mama, from Eden, and from Nunu. He's a happy kid. You can see it. So Love it. Cute. Then a happy birthday to Rowena as well. I'd like to wish my lovely wife Rowena could see her a blessed birthday. May God grant you many, many more um, years. Thank you for everything that you do for us. I love you very much. And that's from your husband, uh, Mikhail, and son, Keanu. And the next one reads, happy birthday to Henry Roman. We wish you many blessings on your birthday. This comes from Dorothy and the family. Looking so snatched, Henry. Yeah. Okay, we see you in the blue rip, suit. Rip. suit. <laughs> and then I wish my wife, Amolia Mateus, a happy birthday. May God bless you with many more. Thank you for being there for us always. I love you so much. This comes from your husband, Randall, and all the, all the kids. They love you so much. Oh, let's sneak in one last one. From the day you were born, you turned our household into something special. We love you with all of our hearts. Happy 12th birthday to you, Tristan Fanger. From your mommy, from your daddy, from your brother, Javin, and Sissy Jareen. Happy birthday, Tristan. Have an awesome day, buddy. And of course, if you'd like to send your loved one a birthday message, then send us your birthday videos to 071 640 or better yet, email your birthday wishes uh, to birthdays at Cordova to, uh, TV. Now, we're all about celebrating our viewers at Expresso. That's why we decided to catch up with one of our avid YouTube fans uh -huh. who goes with the name of, wait for this, No Name Loading. <laughs> You're with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is Expresso here on SABC3. Now, this next lady, she goes by the name, new name loading on her YouTube channel uh, when she is showing us how she's not afraid to get her hands dirty when doing some gardening and building fish ponds and swimming pools all by herself. She is one of our long-standing and inspiring local Expresso viewers. And this morning, we decided to check in with new name loading to find out how she's been staying busy during this national lockdown new name loading good morning thank you so much for joining us you are a youtuber and you use this name new name loading uh, are we ever going to know what your real name is and and why specifically the use of this particular title you've gone with oh yes definitely Tabi, so. um you know what i can actually give you my name my real name my government name only if you employ me there to come and build you one of uh, the fish ponds in your, in your studio. Listen, we wouldn't mind a fish pond here. I'd have to speak to the big bosses about vacancies available. But, I mean, we wouldn't mind having you here. Uh, but let's talk about uh, life during lockdown. Uh, how's that been like for you? Has it affected your oh. content creation for your YouTube channel at all? Not quite, hey, Tadiso, because you know what? I've been uh, a YouTuber since, it's been two months only now. Oh, man. <laughs> now, we know that you build fish ponds and swimming pools from scratch all by yourself without any machinery, which I think is just so amazing. Uh, tell us more about this. Uh, is it something that you're passionate about? How did you get started? Well, it actually started while I was very young, hey? I was still about uh, maybe like 12-ish, 11-ish, I'm not sure really. But I was still, I was actually based, I, I grew up in the Eastern Cape. So, remember these seas and everything that side? So we'd visit the seas now and again. 
So I would actually sit there by the shore by myself, waiting for the fish to come to me. They wouldn't come. So I started building, or actually bought a fish tank at first, and then I started growing more and more love into this uh, aquatic hobby. And then I took it further, then I started building my own pond. So I've got my own pond now. Oh, man. Uh, okay, so do you have a favorite moment from the show, from any other clips that you have <laughs> seen and found on YouTube that stands out for you? Oh, my word. There are so many. <laughs> um, there's this actual one. I could. Um, the one that I, 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 I love the most is actually the Step Womb Challenge. Remember the Step, the step Womb Challenge? The Step Challenge, yes. Mm -hmm. I remember that. That wasn't too long ago. Yes, that's the one for me because today I've got about how many trees of that plant, oh, wow. plant. So I've got about three of them now. Wow. And all of this just from watching the show, it's amazing to see you when see. the content that we put out here connects with people like you who are able to take that and really Definitely. just bring it to life in their own space. Well, new name loading. I love the content you're creating. Everybody here in studio is really, really in love with what you are doing. And we wish you all the Thank best you. with all of that. Thank you so much. Uh, and that was new name loading, whose name we'll find out only if she does get employed on the show and she comes in here and builds a, a couple of fish ponds for us. But we really do value the support of all of our loyal viewers. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. New name loading, you are such an inspiration to many of us. Uh, and of course, that's because of all the hard work that you are doing. All the best.
morning. Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Thanks for, for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Now, um, are you looking for a way to give back to those who need it most at, during this time? Now, then join us in supporting the Woolworths Fill a Bag campaign. Woolies have partnered with Gift of the Givers with an aim to, of distributing one million meals to families in need. And each food pack is filled with a balance of protein and fresh fruit and vegetables and other staples, including hygiene products as well. Now, by donating as little as 10 Rand, you could help provide one person with three meals for a day. Now, all you have to do is scan the QR code on the screen with a SnapScan app, or you can use your own banking app to donate whatever you can towards filling a bag. And remember to encourage also your friends and your family and your neighbors and colleagues and all those people in those chat groups that you'd like to forward messages to every single day. Encourage them too, because every little bit makes a massive difference. So let's get into today's recipe where Chef Clem is introducing you to a rather unique dessert. It's a strawberry salsa with cinnamon tortillas and vanilla sour cream. It's a dessert packed with sweet, juicy, fresh strawberries which are in season and served with homemade crunchy cinnamon chips that make the perfect scoop. It's a uh, dip meats dessert situation that is just perfect for having fun with the whole family with, right? It is. Absolutely. I think so, yeah. I mean, the result of it over there is just what? I, like I'm like, are those tomatoes? No, that's not tomatoes. It's it's strawberries, right? Right. right. We're so used to seeing like this being a very savory like dish. Exactly. But it works so well as a dessert or like a little snack, a little four o'clock, three o'clock snack. How I about it? Really, really yeah, cool. yeah. Okay, let's get to making it then. So all you need are finely diced up yeah. strawberries. Let's talk about the strawberries. So like you said, they're in season now. They're delicious. They're so juicy. Mm -hmm. They're sweet. But I love about. I mean, you can just put your nose close to those strawberries and smell you them. You can smell them from here. Exactly. They are just. They just give off such an intense strawberry smell. And I absolutely love that. That's how you can almost tell that the strawberry you're gonna. You're about to eat is going to be amazing. Yes. But strawberries will fool you. And I've said this before, even a strawberry that looks a little paler than the others yes. will still come through with like massive strawberry flavor. Yes, yes, yes. So I love this. And what, this recipe actually enhances a strawberry flavor as well. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to just do like a little, little fine dice on the strawberries. And this is just me being fancy, but you can totally just chunk it up any way you want to keep okay. it rough if you want. Yes. But um, I like breaking it down. And what happens is when you actually add the lemon juice and the vanilla to the strawberries, a process yes. happens called maceration. Maceration. Yeah, they kind of like it sounds very hectic, like there's a it lot does. going on. But basically, no, maceration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, yeah, it's hectic. But all that happens is the strawberry just breaks down a little bit more. The juices come out. Those juices almost like enhance in flavor, like almost concentrate in a weird way. Yeah. And you get a better texture, more strawberry flavor, as if they weren't flavorsome already. Yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. absolutely great. It's almost like those little strawberry molecules just kind of go. <sighs> they just. They Release it. There we go. It's That's like exactly. Strawberry. Ah, okay. Ah, wow. Like you smell it more. It's <laughs> That's maceration right there. there wow. We go. I love it. I dig it. So this is a lot of like, well, what I'm trying to do is create inspiration around strawberries because right now you get two, yeah, two 400 gram pannets of strawberries for 70 bucks. Okay. Yeah. So you okay. can really go crazy and play around with some ideas of what you're going to do with strawberries. That's and this basically is a, two of these. That, you, you got it. That's you got 400 it. grams exactly, right there. Yeah. That's it. Lovely stuff. Strawberries for days, man. For days. Okay. Smoothies, salsas, everything in between. You got it. Okay. So, strawberries in, a little bit of vanilla. It's not sweet. And you could use vanilla essence, vanilla extract. I but thought it, vanilla was sweet. No, no, no. You see, I like that. It creates an illusion of something sweet because you're never going to taste vanilla or smell vanilla and expect to taste something salty, right? Yeah, never. Your brain already preempts that it's going to be sweet. So when you taste it, it enhances the sweetness of the strawberries. It makes the strawberry taste more like strawberries. Is that, like a, is that a cooking challenge that you're putting out there? Are you going to try and get somebody to cook something or make something with vanilla that's actually savory? That right. fools your brain. It's like, yeah. smells and you go, as you eat it. Whoa. I feel like that's a bit, that, that, that'll, be, that'll be so mean. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Would you try it on Young Phoenix? No, no, no. No, you might like it. Yeah. He, kids, are, kids, kids like it. He's got a weird palate. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Another trick with fruit and with vegetables and, and any dish, it, we know that citrus brings out the flavor even more. Okay. Right? So a little bit of citrus going in there. Maceration is Maceration. happening! Maceration! Okay, and then we're just gonna give it a good old mixy mix. The longer this sits, the more intense those strawberry flavors are gonna become. Oh, wow. Not only, not only the flavors, the colors. Look at that, and then look at that. That's literally just been sitting for like 20 minutes. The colors just intensify so much. It's. It's mind-boggling how it actually happens. Science. Does that have to do with the fact that, like, le lemon, it, it, like, with this acidity, has some kind of oxidative property that it, 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 like, allows the, once again, the molecules of the strawberry to kind of 
almost age quicker. The same way that if you were to take lemon yep. and, 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 and spritz it on top of fish, it uh -huh. cooks it. Yes, possibly. Do we have an expert on the line? No, we don't. We're going to find that person, doctor. Who are we going to call? Doctor someone? Doctor Green? No, no, he's not the doctor. I don't know. It just Dr. sounds Kumalo? fascinating. No, it's he's all. not the doctor. Doctor Kumalo. No. Ah, ah, we need ah. to find the doctor that can Next answer that thing question. going to be calling <laughs> Benny Makai. <laughs> hey, what's up, Benny? Love <laughs> Benny. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Taking out, we've been playing a lot with these tortilla wraps, and I love them. They're so versatile. I buy them in bulk and I freeze them. Yes. It takes like not even a minute for them to thaw out, which is really great. So awesome. I use them for like a lot of like a lot of stuff, the whole wheat ones, the plain the plain flour ones. But today we're gonna turn them into like a sweet tortilla, which is pretty great. Playing on that whole like um, nacho vibes. Nice. But then we're making nice. it, we're making it sweet. So you just cut them in little triangles. Mm -hmm. Then I've got some cinnamon over here, a little bit of vanilla. Vanilla so, everywhere. And a little bit of olive oil. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cinnamon and strawberries also best friends. Cinnamon and strawberries. Vanilla and olive oil. Yeah, it's kind of gonna make a little paste for us. This is once again one of those mind tricks because as soon as you, you smell that little mixture there, you're like, you're expecting something sweet. Exactly, yes. But it's not exactly. It's not, there's no sweetness in it at all. I'm playing so carefully with the sweetness of, the, of this recipe and I'm using other elements to enhance the, the sweetness, but it's not, even, it's not even sweet. It's your senses are picking up, oh, those strawberries taste sweeter than they're actually supposed to. Wow. And it's really, really crazy how your brain could, can easily be tricked. And I said before in restaurants, we used to, we used to wipe our menus with, with vanilla water. Really? Because it'll make you hungry and it'll make you want to order more. The trickery, the trickery, the trickery. Have you ever seen some people going like, oh, look at this little sandwich they got there. Uh, yes. <laughs> no. Sure there were some people no. doing that. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, of course. Pre-COVID, -pre absolutely. So we brush them all nicely, pop them in the oven, and we toast them, and we get these That's cinnamon. Pretty. Look at that, man. Toasted. Man, to that's amazing. Just, it's crazy. It's crazy. Young Graham's on the side. He's also like, what? What? Then, you know, we always top our, our nachos, our tacos, our burritos, our enchiladas. With our, guacamole uh, with, or that kind with, of... It always gets finished with, with a sour cream. Yes, yes, that's true. We're not changing that. Okay. We're still going with the sour cream. And again, that acidity of the sour cream, that tanginess, is going to boost everything else that we're busy playing Good with. Good grief. So what we're doing, sour cream, a little bit of honey. Yes. And just before we serve our beautiful um, salsa, a little bit of mint. We know that mint and strawberries also go really well together. That's what gives it that salsa look as well. Almost like a coriander. Yes, exactly. There we go, the trickery, there we go. You take your tortilla chip, you hit it with a bit of salsa. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I must, I must. And then you top it with a little bit of that sour so you, cream. You, you take your, your tortilla, lovely uh -huh. and crunchy. You're gonna hit it with a bit of You're doing it, you're doing salsa. it. Just, oh, 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 don't waste it now. Don't waste it. A little bit of that sour cream, a little. Can I, this isn't double dipping. No, it's not, you're good. It's initial dipping. Here we go. Woohoo! Oh, yo, oh my word! Uh, and then what? And then what? Face. And now you can't speak. How, like, your brain's like, what? Oh, my brain is macerating. That's what? <laughs> Maceration. Macer oh. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really, really now, good. Now, can you eat your salsa while you salsa, while you send South Africa onto the next? Ow! Hey! Ah, hey. That's the recipe on our website. Expressashow.com Quanta no vera hey. Tortilla quanta It's loco!
So Francois Pinar obviously is a South African sporting legend who needs absolutely no introduction. But in 1995, he led the Springboks to the Rugby World Cup win and has since remained heavily involved in South African sports from rugby to cricket and also the development of young people's lives through his MAD Foundation. Our life in lockdown has not slowed down the former captain at all this morning. He joins us to chat a bit more about Madiba's legacy and the three T Cricket Solidarity Cup success, which was a huge success. Francois, uh, welcome back. Um, so good to see you, even if it is in the comfort of your own home today. Um, but I've, I've got to ask you, as I ask everyone, how have you personally been doing during these crazy times? How have you survived lockdown, my friend? Well, it's actually two things. On, on the family side, we've had the best time with our boys. My one son studies in America at Princeton, so he came back immediately. And we would not have had this time with um, with the boys uh, in, in normal circumstances because the Euro stayed there. My other son is doing his last year um, studying engineering. They would have been gone. So we've had the most insane time as a family. But on the business front, it's a mess. Um, you know, we, we uh, uh, several businesses um, went from a lot of stuff to zero and no income. Um, so it was it's, it's very difficult you know, to try and, and plan. We said three things: plan for the worst, hope for the best, innovation, and, and lock. Uh, and then you got to batten down the hatches. And of course, this July uh, we are uh, celebrating the life and legacy of the father of our nation, someone that you got to know quite well, uh, Nelson Mandela. Tata Madiba obviously handed you the trophy, um, winning in 1995. That Rugby World Cup moment must have been incredible for you. But I'm sure he's inspired you so many more times in your life. What lessons have you? taken from Madiba's life and how you knew him that you continue to live by now? Well, Madiba was a values-based leader. And if you've got values and leadership, then you can do stuff. You can do positive stuff. You can build. And that's the biggest lesson um, that I've learned from him is that your values need to be firm and you need to follow through on them. And you need to be an example of, of that. It's just uh, 25 years ago. It was last month. Wow. We celebrated 25 years. And 25 years feels like yesterday. Now, you are the CEO of the 3T Cricket Solidarity Cup, some live sport you gave us and we loved it. Did you think it was going to be such a massive success and how, how cool was it being able to pull that all together and actually see some, some great sporting action apart from anything else? You know, when I was first approached by the idea, um, I was really excited about it. A lot of hard work because you can imagine the first live sport event in South Africa, given COVID and the restrictions and, and all the, the variables. There were so many variables. But what a wonderful story um, that we told. First live sporting event, best cricketers in South Africa playing, and everybody did it pro bono. Everybody that wow. worked on this did it to give back. And we raised through our sponsors, fantastic sponsors, $3 million. And it's, it's unheard of. So the winning team, ABC, team, they picked Siakulisi's feeding scheme, and there's going to be 250000 going to them. Temba Bavuma, that came second, his feeding scheme is getting 150000 and 100000 going to Imabali. It's a feeding scheme in, in Somerset West. $2.5 million is going into the Hardship Fund, which is a fund that's helping cricketers that have fallen on hard times, and also people working in the cricketing industry, groundsmen, physiotherapists, and so forth. Um, I know that you are working incredibly hard with your family, with those around you to, to paint a more positive image during really difficult times. So thank you so much for that. And um, just thank you for joining us this morning. So good to connect with you and to see that you're doing well. Always nice to chat to you. And good luck to the viewers. We're going to get through this. We're going to get stronger as a nation. Always an incredible honor to chat to a legend, um, not just a sportsman, but a South African who I think um, helps us all feel a little bit more inspired about what we can do if we stand together, especially during the darkest, most difficult times. We certainly wish him well um, in all of his future endeavors. Great catching up with a sporting legend. Uh, an absolute legend indeed. Now, today's Wednesday workout is perfect for building leg and hip strength, which is important when it comes to playing rugby. Now, of course, in the 1995 Rugby World Cup, our winner and our special guest this morning is Francois Pina, who definitely inspired our workout. And we are once again going to be using these resistance bands that you guys have loved so much. And this affordable and versatile piece of exercise equipment is one of the best ways to work out and challenge every muscle in your lower body. So grab those bands and join us for this rugby 
inspired midweek workout and I'm joined by the beautiful Jamie Lee Yay, Dumberg. I'm so excited. <laughs> like if I get a piece of equipment because I don't obviously go to gym right now and I don't have these. So whenever you're like, okay, listen, we're training with resistance bands. I'm like, oh yeah, bring it on. Let's bring do it on. the Let's things. Do it. Let's of do course. It. Now everybody at home is going to love this. It's such a versatile piece of equipment. It literally scrambles up and fits into the palm of your hand. You can hide it anywhere in a bag or wherever you are using. But today we're going to be showing you everything that you can unlock while using your legs and using a simple piece of band equipment like this, all right? So what we're gonna do is take the band, and you're gonna put it above your knees, Jamie. So step inside the band for me to Ooh. start off with. And we're gonna get them just above the knees, all right? So what you wanna do already in this position, if your legs are close together and if you guys at home are also doing the same thing, you'll uh, wanna feel the resistance by standing at least shoulder width apart. So already okay. by standing like that, we're working this lateral line, which is all the, uh, the fascia and the muscles on the side of the body. We've got the medial line on the inside. We've got the anterior line and the posterior chain at the back. And I'm gonna Ooh, show you how we... Yeah. <laughs> the <laughs> rugby players are gonna love all these big fancy words and terms, but for you guys at home, just know that you're gonna be working out the entire region of that pelvic girdle in the legs, right? So starting off with a nice basic squat. This squat has an advantage though, because of the band being above our knees, it's going to also stimulate that lateral line and get a little bit of that glute med action going. So every time we go down for a squat, hinging at the hip, we're going down for the squat, keep pushing out on the band, and then straight back up. And then as you come up, you wanna kick forward, work that hip flex in the front, and then go back to that squat position. Back into the squat once again. Now we're gonna kick that leg to the side and work that glute med. Beautiful, kick it nice and controlled as well when you're doing that. And now back to that squat, and now we're gonna kick it back and work that posterior chain. Squeeze that glute, you feeling that? Yes. Nice, and come straight back down for a squat once again. So let's repeat that on the other leg now, Jamie. Are you feeling anything in this front part? Where in the leg do you feel this kick? I feel it, I feel it everywhere, but I also feel it in my core, because I'm, I'm trying to get yes. my core to get engaged with it, yes. is that right? That's perfect. So what you will find with the band especially, and you guys at home that are trying this, is although we are working the legs, the fact that it's a functional movement, number one, the fact that there's cross-directional uh, forces that are acting on our body, mm -hmm. we need to ensure that our core now is even more engaged. Otherwise, if not, and we kicked out, we'd literally just fall all over the show. So the bands are forcing extra stimulation from the core, which is something that I know you're gonna love at home because I definitely do. I love it. <laughs> all right, so let's finish on the other side now okay. to show everybody at home. We're going again for a squat, then we're kicking through to the front, another squat once again, and now we're gonna kick through to the side, work that glute need, and then another squat and work that posterior chain as well as that glute in the back. And you're gonna repeat this process. You're gonna go for five on each side. So obviously kicking front, left, and to the back is one, one rep. Okay. Yes, exactly. So five each side is going to give you your first exercise done and dusted. And now we're going to move over to the next one, guys. So lying down on the ground now, I love this one so much just because sprinters love it. I think rugby players love it. Anybody that is doing any physical intensive exercise is going to love it. Why? Because it actually wakes up the glute. And one thing that's important is that glute need, which is a muscle that seldom and, and, and seldom is awake as, as much as we need. And often it's just lying dormant and asleep. So we're going to target this bad boy here. So what you're going to do, Jamie, is pretty Pretend as though your heels cannot uh, detach, okay? okay? So you're gonna pivot from the heel and you're gonna try and open this leg up as best as you can, as wide as you can and nice and slow and keeping your shoulders rotating over and hold it there for two seconds and then bring it straight back down once again. Right, so where are you feeling that pain, if anything? Are you feeling a little bit of stimulation? On the inside and the inside, on the inside of my inside. thigh. So I want you to focus on forcing the band to go behind you and I want to get you to get that stimulation in the glute, all right? So take your hip as it currently is and roll it further over. So in that direction, yeah, there you go. That is a better position. Okay. Now try it once again for me, Jamie. Lift that up as high as you can. Oh yeah, there you go. All right. that is burning. That's the burn, that's what you guys want to feel. So make sure you're not rolling rotating over and your chest is facing the sky. You really want to bring your body around. You want to have your chest almost facing in front of you. Your shoulders are stacked right up above each other and that's going to give you that stimulation to activate this glute over here. And this is a brilliant one to hit that uh, glute med, which is something that we need to wake up so often, all right? Glute med, we need to need it. I need to need it. That's everyone <laughs> needs to need that because that hurts. We all need it. Okay, so the last exercise is a brilliant one. Again, it's going to be using the core quite a bit. We're going to drop the band down to our feet and kind of get it around the uh, I'll say like the shaft of the foot essentially. It's just above that arch. All right, so what you're gonna do now, this is something called a dead bug and it's a very advanced exercise. Again, sprinters love it. Anyone with functional movements, anyone running and using that cross chain is going to use this as a perfect exercise to get that stimulation, the strength and the speed out of it. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna lie on your back now for yourself. Obviously okay. you're gonna have everything neutral and aligned on the ground. You're gonna have your knees at about 90 degrees in front of you, arms up in the air and 
what you're going to try to do is firstly start kicking your right leg straight in front of you. All right, yeah, there you go. And when you're going to do that, you're going to have your opposite arm going behind you. So if my right leg's going forward, the left arm goes back, and then I bring it back to center. Now your opposite arm, opposite leg once again. These are the dead bugs. There you go. Now you're going to feel those hip flexors stimulating, and you'll feel the core as well as that eccentric load because you're lifting those hands up. And this is going to be the finisher for your full leg workout. How are you feeling there, Jamie? Oh, that one is a bit difficult because <laughs> you like try to focus on keeping the bands over your feet and then like coordinate. It's, <laughs> it's going to take exactly more than that. just one of these to get me into it, but I like it. I can already feel the burn. I can already feel that the heart is pumping. I'm sweating, so that's always a good sign. Oh, there you go, guys. As simple as that. If Jamie can do it, if I can do it, then you guys have no excuse whatsoever. It's the perfect opportunity to get shredded, work those legs, of course, and all you rugby players out there, get inspired because this is going to allow you to dominate your game. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Catch you after this. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> You only have one skin. Nourish it and wear it bravely. Hi. G'day, I'm coming here live from Port Elizabeth. Now as you see above me, it's absolutely beautiful right now. There's absolutely no cloud cover in the sky. The sun is shining quite brightly, meaning that you can take your last 5 to 10k run right now. Okay, but it is a bit chilly underfoot. So you may want to wear a sweater today, especially if you're going far to work. Um, or if you're staying at home, you can just cattle up with a nice cup of hot chocolate. But it's a beautiful day in Port Elizabeth. See you later. We have a very special treat for you this morning. We are about to chat about the Cape Town Virtual Marathon that is going to be happening on the 18th of October. Yes, virtual <laughs> marathons are a thing. They have become a worldwide phenomenon, obviously, because of COVID-19. And in the studio to tell us more about the Cape Town Virtual Marathon, we have the one, the only, the legend, Francois Pina, a good <laughs> friend of our show. And he's joined um, and uh, welcomed also by us, Spencer Sun, the Managing Director of Woolworths Foods. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning in these, in these unprecedented, crazy times. I'm so glad we could meet with you virtually. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's, uh, yeah, it's crazy times. Francois, if I could start with you, the, the Cape Town Marathon, which we're talking about at the moment, it's become a prominent feature on South Africa's marathon calendar. Now, obviously, the outbreak of COVID-19 has kind of caused the world to change, to say the least. But how is the marathon now going to work? Yeah, well, when, when the pandemic struck, we sat down and we had to plan. So we said we have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. And secondly, we need to innovate. Now, last year... People from over 85 countries flew to uh, South Africa to come and run the marathon. There's 30,000 people on the streets, and we said it's unlikely that international travel is going to be there, and it's unlikely that mass gatherings would be allowed. Now, virtual running is not new, but we then said to ourselves, let's do something that's so innovative that nobody else has done in the world. The Sunlam Cape Town Marathon is the only gold label marathon on the African continent for the last three years. So we, we said it's going to be a virtual marathon with a, with a difference. We're combining cutting-edge technology with real-time tracking, with 3D audio to give people an experience they've never had in running a, a marathon. But you can also run a 5-kilometer, a 10-kilometer, a 21, and the real deal, um, the full marathon. 
Spencer, obviously you guys have jumped on board. How is Woolworths involved in the virtual 2020 edition of the marathon? Yeah, good morning, guys, and, and, and great to chat to you. Um, you know, as a business, we, we try to encourage our colleagues to stay active. Um, and so many of the team here at Woolies uh, participate in, in competitive sporting uh, activities and events. Um, but it, it really is an innovation where we feel we play our best game. And so, you know, given the, the unusual circumstances we find ourselves in, we wanted to adapt our, our usual um, offering to help make the, this virtual Cape Town Marathon experience as enjoyable as we, as we possibly can. We're going to be setting up 15 feeding stations, well-stocked feeding stations, uh, and these will be based at select Woolies stores across the country. Um, and so the thinking is that, you know, participants will be able to stop in, uh, provided they're wearing, you know, masks and, and, and buffs, or, of course, um, and refuel with a selection of individually packaged snacks uh, and refreshments. You know, these will be classic uh, convenient solutions that support an active lifestyle um, and as you'd expect will be of the, the standard of quality that, that Woolies is known for. Um, and of course we'll be ensuring that we're implementing you know all of the, the relevant hygiene and, uh, and social distancing protocols. You know we really want to encourage runners to, to plan their routes uh, in such a way that they go past these stores uh, which will be listed on the, on the Cape Town Marathon website. Um, and we hope that these non-virtual uh, pit stops uh, will make, make the run even more pleasurable. Oh, Spence, I think it's so smart and such a cool way to get that extra gears in this event. And uh, now, Francois, for you, the app has been developed and it's, I've noticed it's so, so unique. And one thing that's really prominent is the fact that you actually feel a part of the marathon. That's exactly what we're trying to achieve. Um, so you'll download the app. The app will give you uh, the view of lighting of the peace torch. Uh, we can sing, if you're in South Africa, in South African, sing Nkosi Sikalele Africa, and then the gun will start the race. <laughs> and you can then track where you're running through the streets of Cape Town, wherever you are. So you might be in, in Berlin or in Tokyo or in South Africa planning your marathon route. So it'll give you a tracking real time on your route, but also show you where you would have been in the streets of Cape Town. And then we want to give people the experiences of Cape Town, the sounds of the promenade, um, when they run into the city bowl, um, when they run past Madiba's statue, his first speech when he came out of prison, those landmark experiences we want to actually share with people virtually. And also when you cross the finish line, you're going to get a virtual applause. <laughs> so doing everything to give uh, the runners around the world a flavor of Cape Town so that next year when we're back to normal, people will come and, and run the beautiful uh, streets of Cape Town. Francois, there's been a particular challenge that's become uh, a tradition of sorts at the event. Can you tell us a bit more about the Captain's Challenge? So when I got involved with the, the Son of Gator Marathon, we started the Captain's Challenge, challenging captains of industry, captains of sport, captains of politics to come and run, to stay fit and healthy, either the 10-kilometre peace run or the real deal, the marathon. I've been fortunate enough to get captains like John Smith of rugby, Graham Smith of cricket, and people to do this. But now I want to challenge uh, Spencer to come and run the 10K <laughs> peace run with me on the 18th of October. Will you accept my challenge, Spencer? <laughs> this has really been an incredibly exciting project for Woolies. Um, it really feels good uh, to work with Franco and the team and you know, do our part to offer the runners you know, some small sense of normality in these very difficult times. Um, and yeah, and then to, to Francois's challenge, I guess this is the joy and, and the beauty of, of, of partnership. Um, I'm certainly not going to be the guy who rejects a challenge from an iconic World Cup winning, uh, winning captain. So uh, I'll be there. Thank you. So lastly, guys, the Sunlum uh, Cape Town Marathon, the virtual marathon, is taking place on Sunday, the 18th of October. That gives us plenty of time to get training. Uh, can you tell us again where people can register and how much it's going to cost us to enter? And where can people find out more information about the race and all the related events that will be taking place? Rail, all is on uh, the, the website, uh, capetownmarathon.com. We'll tell you what, what the cost is. It's from 50 Rand up to 180 Rand for the, for the marathon. And all the details there, the route, uh, when the app will be available on the store. So just go to capetownmarathon.com and you can find everything there. For the international runners, thank you so much for, for getting on board, Spencer and Francel, for everything that you put into this. Um, it really is so impressive. So glad you guys have been able to, to readapt to what we need to do here during these crazy times. Thank you for that. Thank you for having us. And while I have a, a second or two, the people that's watching Espresso, I hope that they will also be running some part uh, or even just walking the 5K to stay fit on the 18th of October. See you there virtually.
See you there. Thanks, that sounds buddy. like a captain's challenge to me. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge to me. We'll rise to that. Guys, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Oh, brilliant. Now, whether you're planning to do your first five kilometer or if you're a serious marathon runner, the Sunlum Cape Town Marathon is going to be fun for all. And of course, tomorrow, the legendary world marathon runner, Ilana Meyer, will be in studio and she's going to share her training tips with you. So this is something you are not going to want to miss out on. Get ready to run the Sunlum Cape Town Virtual Marathon wherever you are in the world on the 18th of October 2020. The race is on. Well, the race is on. It's all about the marathons here on your Feel Good Breakfast show this morning. Uh, and I was just having a chat now with uh, Jamie Lee around the fact that she will not marry into a family that runs because she wouldn't know where to start, wouldn't know where to start. Uh, but I think you and I are the same. Because same. Would, would you actually like no, do a marathon? It wouldn't, it's not going to happen just yet. I'm not, not in your bucket never. list. I mean, Romeo Kumalo does it and at his age, he inspires me. I think I could potentially still find myself stepping into that zone. But for now, let's read the comments of those who actually have. Absolutely. And Nombolelo says, uh, yes, I have eight kilometers and I won a some of the things I miss. Nombolelo, you are just wow. serving us goals out there. Eight kilometers. That's major. Wow. That's amazing. That's Another big. one from AJ Joseph. AJ Joseph says, hi, family. I remember running at the age of 13 or 15 years old. I barely know how many kilometers. Either way, it was a church or Sunday school marathon. All I can remember is that I had so much fun and received two gold medals at, uh, and pre at a preschool. It was five or seven Ks, and there I won one bronze uh, medal. Uh, luckily, I still have my achievements family. Point is, I had fun. Hashtag Expresso Show SABC3. Stay safe, guys. Everyone that can read this, much love from me. Hey, it's impressive, AJ. You've been at it from preschool. Uh, but that's fantastic. Please do keep those comments coming through on our Facebook page, Expresso Morning Show SABC3. Want to know all about your marathon stories. Right now, though, it's time to find out what's happening in the world. Here's Kat with the news. It's just gone one minute past seven on this Wednesday, the 29th of July. Let's take a look at the news headlines. On the national news front, in a victory for ESCOM, the High Court has reviewed and set aside a decision by the National Energy Regulator of South Africa to deduct a 69 billion rand equity injection from the power company's allowable revenue for the current three-year period. Now, it instructed instead that the full amount must be reinstated to the embattled utilities allowable revenue for the next three years. This means ESCOM can now apply for higher tariffs. The court ordered that the average standard ESCOM tariffs approved by NURSA for the 2021-2022 financial year be increased by 11 and a half cents per kilowatts each hour. Now, South Africa's economy is likely to contract by 7.2% this year due to the impact of COVID-19 and growing debt repayments will hamper its recovery, the International Monetary Fund said yesterday. The IMF approved 70 billion rand in emergency financing on Monday. And meanwhile, National Treasury said in a radio interview yesterday that the multi-billion rand loan had not jeopardized South Africa's sovereignty and that the loan was negotiated carefully. It was stated that the country would be able to honor the conditions attached to the deal. On the international news front, the president of the African Development Bank, 60-year-old Akinumi Adesina, has been cleared of corruption charges after a review by an independent panel. This after whistleblowers had accused the flamboyant Nigerian of giving contracts to friends and appointing relatives at the bank. America, one of the bank's biggest shareholders, insisted on a new inquiry in April after an internal review cleared him. A charismatic speaker, who is known for his elegant suits and bow ties, has he has led the bank since 2015 and is set to be re-elected for another five-year term in August. Now, nearly three billion animals either perished or were displaced by bushfires in Australia in 2019 and 2020. This according to research by the Worldwide Fund for Nature. It said 143 mammals, 2.5 billion reptiles, 180 million birds and 51 million frogs were impacted by the country's worst bushfires in decades, preceded by years of drought. Now, this is triple its estimates at the time the fires were still blazing. The organization said the fire ranks as one of the world's worst wildfire or wildlife disasters in modern history. 
And now news of an epic walk by man and his best friend. Now who better to see the world with than your best friend? Especially when your best friend is a dog. Now Tom Turkic, who's 31 years old of New Jersey in the United States and his adorable pooch Savannah, have walked nearly 40,000 kilometers through dozens of countries over the past five years. Now they're presently stuck in Azerbaijan due to lockdown. And when it's over, they'll be heading to Mongolia and then to Australia before returning to the US. Tom says when his best friend Emery died suddenly, he realized how fleeting life was and he decided he wanted to experience humanity in the deepest, most immersive way possible. So he left the comforts of his New Jersey home on this journey. In Austin, Texas, he thought of having a companion, so he visited an adoption center where they brought out a three-month-old pu three puppy and he immediately knew that Savannah was for him. The two have since spent every day together, traversing some 39,000 kilometers and 37 countries. And Savannah has proven time and again to be the faithful companion Tom had dreamed of. And finally, taking a quick glimpse into the world of entertainment this morning, hearing the signature phrase, be kind to one another from TV host, comedian and actress Ellen DeGeneres will no longer bear the same significance. For the past few weeks, the empire of the Ellen DeGeneres show, as well as the host's reputation, have come under serious scrutiny and disrepute following a scathing expose by BuzzFeed News. Now, it reported that the be, ki the be kind mantra serves to mask an underlying toxic work culture, a view it gathered from 10 former employees and a current one who were interviewed anonymously. Now they shared stories of fear, intimidation and racism and it's said that the current employees are relieved and even joyous that the public is finally being made aware of what goes on behind the scenes. The executive producers responded to the BuzzFeed article expressing heartbreak that there has even been one negative experience as they have striven to create an open, safe and inclusive work environment. In the latest development it's been announced that an investigation will be conducted by an employee relations group from the show's parent distribution company Warner Media alongside a third-party firm as they interview current and former employees. Ellen herself has yet to comment on this story since it broke two weeks ago and we'll be discussing this story a little bit later on in full in our entertainment report. Well that's it for the news at seven o'clock right now here's another look at your sporting headlines with Graham. Thanks so much, Kat. Let's start with quite a significant milestone for English bowler Stuart Broad. He picked up his 500th test wicket. That as England claimed an emphatic 269-run win over the West Indies in their third and final test to walk away as series winners at the Emirates Old Trafford in Manchester. Broad, who was named man of the match on the day, is only the seventh bowler and fourth paceman to reach the milestone. An incredible achievement. The West Indies were chasing down 399 for the win, but collapsed at 129 in uh, just 37.1 overs. Then on to rugby news. British media yesterday reported that Fiji and the 2019 Rugby World Cup host Japan will join the Six Nations sides for an eight-team tournament later this year. The two nations will join England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, France and Italy for a tournament starting on the 14th of November, just two weeks after the final round of the 2020 Six Nations competition. And finally, on to football news. A newly crowned La Liga champion Real Madrid yesterday announced that Spanish-born striker Mariano Diaz has tested positive for COVID-19. The 26-year-old is said to be in perfect health though and has been complying to the self-isolation rules at home. Los Blancos of course won the Spanish League earlier this month and will be back in action next week in the UEFA Champions League round of 16. Now though um, we have an opportunity to see what is in store for you and our weather. to you team a good morning to you south africa i'm coming to you live from the rhino and lion nature reserve in kruger's dob listen i'd be lying if i said i wasn't trying to keep a brave face because oh yeah man uh, i can't feel my fingers it's currently at a low of three degrees but later on um an afternoon temperature of 18 degrees at least the sun is going to be making an appearance to melt the cold away but as we do every single day we love looking at the sunrise pictures that we receive from you from across our beautiful country is all we received a rather enthusiastic a very informative report uh, from U Worship Fremantle about Iweda Yasepai. Mike Strong, your team. 
coming to you live from Port Elizabeth. Now, as you see above me, it's absolutely beautiful right now. There's absolutely no cloud cover in the sky. The sun is shining quite brightly, meaning that you can take your nice 5 to 10k run right now. Okay, but it is a bit chilly underfoot, so you may want to wear a sweater today, especially if you're going far to work, um, or if you're staying at home, you can just cattle up with a nice cup of hot chocolate. But it's a beautiful day in Port Elizabeth. See you later. That was hilarious. I absolutely loved it. Thank you so much, Worshi, for sharing the feel goodness with us right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. You too at home can do the same by sharing your sunrise pictures or videos, whatever it may be, from across the country on our Facebook page, Expresso Show SABC3. But right now, uh, let's move across the board. Inclement weather continues to cause havoc in the Middle East as four days of non stop torrential rains are causing floods, claiming dozens of lives and uh, destroying hundreds of homes from war-torn Yemen. The country's rainy season, which usually occurs from May to September, has been unusually heavy this year. In addition to adverse weather, the country is now also dealing with cholera as well as COVID-19. The UN estimates 24 million Yemens, that is more than 80% of the population, depend on on some form of humanitarian aid or protection for survival. It really breaks my heart to report on the tragedies other nations are faced with, particularly during a life-threatening pandemic. I pray for all of our safety and well-being. But bringing it closer to home, Upper M. Zanzi, according to the South African Weather Service, it's going to be a fine and cool day across the country. Starting off at Bologwane at a maximum of 20 degrees, but starts off the morning at a low of 4. And Bombela, 9.28. Oh, 28 is such a beautiful temperature. Pretoria, it's a sunny day as well at a maximum of 21. Moving over to Jorzy Maboneng, 4 is your low, reaching a maximum temperature of 18. Mahike starts off very chilly at a low of 2 degrees, reaching a high of 21. Glakes drop to 20, and Kimberley, the big hole, 222. Bloemfontein starts off at minus 1 today, reaching a high of 20 degrees. Richards Bay, a beautiful day coming your way, uh, a maximum of 26 degrees, but starts off at 12. Peter Maritzburg, a partly cloudy day, 725 are your temperatures. Temperatures for Namhlanje, South Africa's playground, Durban, 1125. Mtata down in the Eastern Cape, 5 is your low, reaching a high of 22. Now, in next, Dokwas Mtata, East London, 920 are your temperatures. A sunny day for Cradock at a maximum of 23. My hometown, Port Elizabeth, stand up, 718 are your temperatures, Namhlanje. George is your low, reaching a high of 18. The Mother City, Cape Town, 1220. Vusta, partly cloudy day, 418. Sutherland, whoo, minus 4 starts off the morning reaching a high of 15. So if you are stepping out of the house, make sure to keep warm. Last but not least, Uppington, a sunny day coming your way at a maximum of 25, but starts off at 6 degrees. That was your 7 o'clock weather roundup. We do this again at the top of the hour, 8 o'clock live at the Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve in Kruger's Dope. You do not want to miss on today's festivities. Keep it locked on your feel-good breakfast show. Ah, ah, a safari queen. Thank you very much, Kutia, for bringing us that live weather update all the way out in Kruger's Drop, Johannesburg. Of course, we'll be catching up with Kutia mm. all throughout the morning, bringing us all the action from Kruger's Drop. But now, as you are all well aware, sharing delicious food and recipes with you is really a must every single morning for us here on Expresso. Uh, but it's not every day that you get to win two while we do it. And our Be Well hashtag switch to canola competition is overflowing with entries. And we're only a couple of hours away from another announcing our next winner. It's all the excitement, but fear not. You still have until midnight tonight to enter if you haven't entered, or if you want to enter again. And here are some of the really, really awesome entries that have come through uh, so far. Coming in fast and thick. And now the first one is our Expresso fan, Lorna Fisher. Now she says, I use it for everything as it's a much healthier option. But the best is my chocolate cake that comes out beautifully with canola. Does that not just mm, look too good, Tams? Man, mm, you don't mm, need mm, a mm. knife and a fork for that one. <laughs> just straight <laughs> yeah. And now we've got Paulina Matapa who says, my breakfast won't be perfect without canola oil. And that's why I hashtag switch to canola. I love the use of that hashtag there. And that just looks delicious indeed, a breakfast mm. of champs. Mm. And now we've got Sagar and Chetty saying another, well, she says um, that's her favorite crab curry. And it oh. just wouldn't be the same without canola oil. That just looks yes. delicious. And last we've got Charlotte Singh who says her mutton biryani just wouldn't be the same 
without B. Wow, biryani is just my favorite. Oh, oh that looks so, so good. I'm hungry, suddenly. <laughs> suddenly so, so hungry. Uh, but listen, this, uh, the competition is on. Clearly heating up as well. It's clearly heating up uh, without a doubt. Don't forget to enter and get your entries in. Of course, to win this week, simply reply to the competition post on Express or Facebook or Twitter pages and tell us which dish just simply wouldn't be the same without Be Well Canola Oil. And of course, hashtag switch to canola. And this competition will close tonight at midnight. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow for a brand new chance to win. T's and C's, of course, they do apply. And you can find them on our website. It's expressoshow.com. Be well. Love, food, life. Welcome back to it, your Feel Good Breakfast Show. It is Expresso. We're live right here on SABC3 on a beautiful Wednesday morning. Thank you very much for choosing this, uh, to start the day off with us. Now, of course, you did see Kutle coming to you live from Krukersdorp out in Johannesburg. And you're probably wondering, why? Why is Kutle out in the wild? Well, this morning, Kutle is visiting what used to be called the Animal Crash and now called the Wildlife Center to really explore the rich diversity of wildlife that our country has to offer. And right now, finding out how they've been coping throughout lockdown. But of course, what that center of the Botongo Group has to offer. Over to you, Kusi. Listen, man, we are truly privileged as South Africans to have a wide variety of wildlife on our home soil. And that is why I'm truly excited to be at the Rhino and Lion um, Nature Reserve to learn more about these species, but most importantly about the ones that are also endangered. We are joined this morning by Mike Finn to learn more about the reserve. A very good morning to you, sir. Thank you for having me. And good morning to you, Kusi. I mean, I believe that... You know, it, the reserve changed from Animal Crash to the Wildlife Center. Why was there a change? Yes, Kushle, that's correct. Um, the crash really was in place whilst we had um, animal interactions and cub petting in place. Mm -hmm. um, the management actually took a decision last year to, to stop uh, cub petting and animal interactions for a number of reasons. Um, and this became the wildlife center here, which is where we've got a lot of endangered species mm -hmm. um, and indigenous species as well. Um, the decision was a huge one. It was a bold move uh, to move away from cub petting, mm. uh, primarily because we believe that the focus should be on the animal rather than on the human. Mm. And so uh, we went in that direction. We said that we believe that you don't have to touch to connect. We would far rather 
our visitors made an emotional connection mm. to the animals rather than a physical connection. Mm. And there are a lot of complications involved, you know, with, with cub petting. What kind uh, of complications, Mike? Well, you know, you have to have, obviously, baby animals, mm. which means that you need to remove those animals from their mother mm. after a few days, um, hand rear them, and then you've got a limited time, obviously, um, where you can use those animals in, in, in interactions as such, because mm. predators tend to grow. Mm. And when they grow, they can become dangerous. So after several months, maybe three to six months or so, you've got a limited period. And then what are you going to do after that? Mm. Now you've got a lot of animals which you're holding on to, let's mm. say. At some stage, you're going to have to dispose of those animals. That's true. Unless you're going to spend a huge amount of money to look after the animals for the rest of their lives, which mm. is obviously not possible. So, although it was a, there, it was a, it was a big revenue generator, obviously. Mm. So course. that's why it was such a bold decision to take. Mm. Um, so we believe it's the right direction. I also truly believe that it is the right direction because as humans, we so focus on, you know, our own human satisfactions and we forget about the processes that you've just mentioned now about, you know, taking cubs away from their families yeah. and their parents and training them to feed our own, you know, desires. So yeah. that is truly a bold move that you've made. And yeah. how have how have the public received that decision? You know, very well, I think. Mm. Um, <laughs> Look, obviously it's lovely mm. to be able to pet a little animal. Yes. You know, it's cuddly and it's beautiful and all of those sort of things. Mm -hmm. um, but when you start taking into consideration all these other factors, um, it, 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 um, uh, the public then begins to see that, in fact, what we're doing is we're focusing on the, we're focusing on the, um, uh, on, on the animal's welfare rather than on, on, on the human's satisfaction mm. and our mm. satisfaction. Mm. So, as I say, rather make the emotional connection. What animal is that one? It is so big and so majestic. I'm not sure if we can <laughs> see that one. <laughs> That's, that, um, Kushle, uh, that is a, a white a Bengal white tiger. Mm. Um, a beautiful animal. Uh, and yes, they do grow to an enormous size, obviously. Wow. This is a, a, an enclosure that we built recently to house them. Mm. Um, and, you know, tigers love water. Yes. And so you can see that there's this lovely pool of a waterfall mm -hmm. um, and a stream running through. And they spend a lot of time in the water. Really? Um, playing in the water and, and just getting themselves cool, particularly in the hot weather. That's very um, interesting to yeah. learn, Mike. Yeah. I'm so, so excited to explore the rest of the nature reserve. So I'll be here the rest of the day. Thank you so Fantastic. much. Fantastic. Well, well, lovely to have you, Kushle, oh. and, uh, and, and, and your viewers. Oh, honestly, such a lovely thing to learn about the nature reserve and the history and the name change and the reasons behind it. And we're going to yep. be learning so much more about it because later on, we're going to be going to the breeding center to see exactly what they do that side. You do not want to miss it. Keep it locked right here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Oh, such fantastic work that they're doing. Thank you so much, Mike Flynn, for that. Of course, Kutle, for bringing us all of that action. What a way. What a way to get into a brand new day. What a way to start your morning. Oh, hey? absolutely. Like, I she's out that. there in the wild. Oh, and she's just, taking Also, I'm just in. loving the fact that she's, like, matching with the out there. Like, just looking like she's ready to take on the safari life. She had to. She had to have the prints on. She's probably confusing the animals. They don't know if it's a human, if it's another animal. They want to make friends. But anyway, uh, do you know why winters trouble? Do you know? No. No, you don't? Okay. Well, it's because every single time you feel uh, a little hungry or just want some tea, you end up having an Omar Rusk too. Oh, no, and it's okay, always hard it. to stop at just one. It's true. I know all about that. And that's why that uh, this week we have asked you to share a photo of you enjoying a Rusk for that little midday snack. And the best three photos will each uh, walk away with a coffee plunger and Omar Rusk's hamper. Oh, come through. But before the competition closes on uh, Thursday, we thought we'd share some of our favorite entries so far. There's been so many. Uh, and the first photo we want to share is from Pammy Kumar. Milo. Now she sent us this photo and says, I enjoy my midday Omer dip while ironing my clothes. Okay. I think a lot of us are, you know, guilty of taking a snack break right in the middle of our household <laughs> chores sometimes. <laughs> like you just want a snack and then iron <laughs> and then wash the dishes and then, yeah. While you're snacking. Yeah. And our next photo is from Levin Doris who says uh, she likes uh, taking a break from my calls means my tea break uh, has turned into my Omer Rusks moment. No shame in that. No shame in that. What is tea without a rusk? I what mean, is tea without a rusk? 
That is nothing. Okay. And then lastly, Lyndall Adams sent us this sneaky photo of her mom and says, my mom loves her dipping whilst she's working. Mom didn't even have time to look up for this photo. Look, their mom is just happy. <laughs> but of course, thank you to everyone who has entered so far. But remember, you can still stand a chance of winning because the competition only closes tomorrow at 11 a.m. So make sure you enter, reply to the competition post on our Expresso Facebook or Twitter page and include the hashtags anytime is dipping time. Uh, and this week, you stand a chance of winning one of three coffee plungers and Omar Ras hamper worth 500 rand. So make sure you get on it. Remember, those T's and C's do apply and can be found on ExpressoShow.com. Are you already finishing your, finishing your rap? Stop. No one's stopping you. Come on. <laughs> With Omar Rusks, it's always dipping time. From the first thing in the morning right through to that midnight snack in bed. What is your favorite dipping time? Confetti, pop the, the bubbly, light the candles, yeah, blow them out. It's dance, birthday time on your feel good mm. breakfast show. Of course, our moment to wish you, our loved and loyal viewers, a very, very happy birthday. And uh, if it is your birthday, you share it with somebody really cool uh, American blogger, actor, and writer, Richard William Wheaton III, who he turns 48 years old. Do you remember that face? You might. Uh, he's best known for his blog, willwheaton.net and one of his books titled Dead Trees Give No Shelter. Wow, Ooh, wow, cool. what? Okay, cool. Uh, he's worked on more than 40 films and appeared on the famous sitcom The Big Bang Theory. There he is. Yeah. Do you remember that scene? Thing. Graham, I, 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 I watched Big Bang Theory over and over and over and over and over, so I'm a big, big Will Wheaton fan, but he was a former child star. That's why he's so popular with the Big Bang team is because oh. he was on Star Trek Next Generation as a child star. Oh. So that's where he first kind of that got developed his notoriety. But we, we did some so he was in Stand By Me with River Phoenix, with one of the most legendary films of that, that year, any era, that probably, man. So, yep. got some chops. He was also recently appointed as the first global board game ambassador for the Games by Bicycle line uh, of board and card games. I mean, that is just other levels of awesomeness that I'm just not even aware of. What? But happy birthday to Richard Will Wheaton the third. The third. 
Um, we absolutely love that, man. So um, you're in good company, Will, because there are plenty of South Africans that are celebrating their birthdays today. Let's kick it off with a red wine, who it says 29th birthday. He's a red birthday. wine, indeed. He's a red wine. He is He's a red, red wine. wine. Yeah, red to the core. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may Allah grant you all your heart's desires. Have a blessed day. Much love from Tashneem, your mother, Ishaq, uh, father, sister, uh, Adila, and brother, Ikshan. Happy birthday, red wine. Have an awesome, awesome day. Yep. Then uh, happy birthday to Nad- uh, Naledi Charlie as well. May your birthday bring you as much happiness as you give to everyone who knows you. Happy birthday. And that's coming to you from all of your friends. Happy chaba, birthday. Chaba, Chaba, Naledi. Yeah. Also, happy 23rd birthday to Mondi Sibelekwana. I pray that God blesses you with all the happiness in this universe. May you prosper and shine everywhere you go. And this is from the uh, MAFS management team, MAFS. That's the team that you work for, obviously. There. Then happiest of birthdays to your uh, to you, Park Class God Wills. Uh, may your cup be filled with gladness and your tears be tears of joy. Uh-huh. May God bless you with wealth and happiness in the years that lie ahead. Thank you for the godly example you set for us. This is with love from Nahum, from Cruz, and from Eli. Happy birthday, Park Class. Oh, and then a happy birthday, a 13th birthday. It's quite a big one. Happy 13th to my baby boy, Shailen. Lots of love uh, from your mum, your dad, and uh, Timmy. Uh, happy birthday, Shailen. Hope you're having an amazing day. Mm. Um, but let's squeeze in one last birthday if we can. It's a, it's a big one. 40th birthday. Milestone for Barry Muller. May you have an awesome day that's coming to you from your sisters, your auntie Elaine, from Uncle Jerome, family and friends. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to be able to speak to Barry right now and find out just it. how awesome got a, a day he is happening, having right now. Um, Barry, do we have you on the line, bud? Hello, yes. Happy uh, birthday, woo! Barry! Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday, Barry. The big 4-0. How are you feeling about, about turning 40, bud? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, really good. Yeah. And you've got a great message there from uh, your sisters, from Auntie Elaine, and from Uncle Jerome, and all of your family and friends. What do you have to say to them? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for all the good times. And uh, yeah, as I like to say, thank you for the 40 years that I'm on the earth. Thank you. Oh, hey, man. Very good. Before you go, how, how are you celebrating? Yeah, how, how do you celebrate a 40th during lockdown? Man, I'm just going to be at home. Keep it nice and safe. Keep it nice and safe. Well, Barry, thanks so much for taking the call. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day, man. Thank you very much. There we Sounds go. Like a nice I guy, love that. Barry, man. Love that. Connecting with our viewers out there and just saying happy birthday. There's a toast to Barry on his 40th, man. Happy birthday. Listen, if you'd like to send your loved one a birthday message, then send us your birthday videos to 0716406551 or you can email all of your birthday wishes, including those beautiful pictures, to birthdays at cardova.tv. Now, let's uh, make a birthday treat, right? Uh, uh-huh. Clem's making a sticky butterscotch brownie Ridiculous. with roasted strawberries. Get just even saying it is just like... <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, I think it's so awesome that we get to chat live to our viewers. And Barry, of course, we're wishing you a beautiful and incredible day and a happy birthday indeed. And of course, I'm, I heard you're not doing much. You're just going to be chilling at home. But I'm going to change that, my man. I've got the perfect idea for you and your birthday. Now, we all love a gooey brownie. But how does a deliciously sticky butterscotch brownie sound? Mm, music to my ears. And did we mention the roasted strawberries part? Yeah, that's right. Chef Clem is changing up your brownie routine by serving these butterscotch brownies with sticky roasted strawberries and lashings of vanilla custard. Yeah, you heard right. It's the warm and comforting dessert of your dreams, Barry, and I know you're going to love it. Chef Klim, how are we doing this thing? It's roasted straw, Barry. Oh, that's Because straw, it's dedicated Barry. to him. This is for you, Barry. Barry, we got you old. covered. <laughs> My goodness, amazing. All right, so we're going to do this for Barry and everybody yeah. else celebrating their birthdays. A strawberry edition of this butterscotch brownie. Oh, Chef did you try that? I did. I actually, because obviously Nicole like sneaked a little tester this morning, yeah. and I stole one. And I was supposed to be fasting, but that ended wow. really badly. Wow! Wow! That was good. Oh. We gave it to the camera crew as well. So if you see the camera shaking, it's they're, just, <laughs> they're, they're just like overwhelmed by it. It's it's new, right? And mm. all basically is it's a new butterscotch brownie mix from Woolies. It is like. 
I can't explain it to you. It's so dense and delicious and fudgy. That's basically the recipe on its own. Obviously, we do things like next level. We're going to amp it up with some beautiful roasted strawberries. But honestly, Wow. wow! I think if you guys are paying close attention to these incredible HD cameras that we have, look up at the lips. I think everybody has got a little bit yeah. of crumbs and butterscotch oh. in there. They're sneaking oh. it in every it's time. It's so good. <laughs> it's so delicious. Okay, what I love about it is the fact that they've like the epicness is in the box, but then with these Willy's like bake, baking kits, you can kind of make it your own. So what we did, we actually topped it with some beautiful hazelnuts, and I'm gonna show you how we yeah. did it in a bit. But it's so so simple. I'm hoping this is gonna be one of those like tapiso and Raoul friendly desserts where we can just chuck it in, yeah. chuck it in. Chuck it in, done. Yeah. <laughs> I really got to be so clear because I gave him some and he was also just like mind blown. Right. He was like, how can this be just like that? It's so good. So a bit of mal malted butter going in and then the brown sugar. So if you look at the brownie, it's a it's a brownie, right? It's still brown. Yes. Yeah, it's a caramelly brownie, butterscotch brownie. It's a nice, it's a nice shade of brown. Like it's a my, nice, like yeah. Like my Venezuelan tan. Wow. <laughs> It's a, it's, yes, I like that, absolutely. The reason it's, it's also got that little deji fun, fudgy center is because of the sugar that we're using. Okay. So brown sugar doesn't only add sweetness, it adds texture to it, so it allows like your cakes and your brownies, so they're like soft, fudgy, dense texture to it. Your Venezuelan colored all the brownie. Good stuff you're talking all the good about. stuff. So we're gonna get that in there and we're gonna start mixing it through. But it's so simple. The sugar and the actual mix comes in the box already. So all you need to add is the butter, and the egg. I mean, right. talk about a baking like hack. That's amazing. Barry, I hope you're listening, birthday man, because this is as simple as it sounds. We're almost halfway through your birthday edition, so I hope you're paying attention to everybody else at home that's celebrating. This is so simple. And of course, if you've just tuned in, head over to expressoshow.com where we've got some more of this inspiration, and we're gonna show you how to do the things. Butterscotch, strawberry infused brownie. Chef Clem, how far are we how are we doing here? Like I'm basically almost done. Egg really? going in. <laughs> and you make that through okay and then the dry ingredients go in it is so simple but it's absolutely so decadent especially now like you at home we're all trying to stay safe keeping staying at home better keep the kids occupied not yeah. only the kids i mean this lockdown i think we're all looking for it indeed oh yeah <laughs> people like the, the bakers have come out this lockdown it's crazy like everybody's like into baking everybody wants to start like baking their next best dish and this is how you're going to do it it's so 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 good so all you're going to do add the dry ingredients you're going to mix it through and once the dry ingredients are mixed through, you put it in a, um, we did a square little baking tin and we lined it with some baking paper. By the way, wax paper and baking paper are two different things. Wax paper is lined with wax. So when it actually bakes, and we know that as soon as you add heat to it, the wax is gonna melt. So it's actually gonna melt into your cake or whatever you're busy with. People have made this mistake and then they like- Eating they, that wax. Yeah, so baking Nobody paper. No wax can you imagine cake, the, man. Can you imagine, imagine <laughs> the sadness? Yeah, you spend so much time making cake and then you go and line it with wax paper and then... And you just get this like candle sensation in three <laughs> Yes, <laughs> candle sensation. <laughs> no, no, guys, of course. Another tip there from Chef Kim. What is it? So don't use wax paper. Baking paper use or baking silicone paper. paper, yeah. People, baking paper, silicone paper, not wax paper. Not wax Unless paper. you like that waxy taste. Unless you Unless like that waxy taste. All about that wax life, then of course, go, go wild. Go wow, clean. okay. <laughs> hazelnuts going on, and the hazelnuts are going to toast as this bakes. Oh, that looks good. Which is so good. And that's going to give you that nice crunch. Cool. That goes to the oven, and they come out super dense of you like that. But now we're not done. We're talking strawberries today. Yeah, I'm hearing caramelized strawberry vines. We're gonna roast we're we're roasting. Roasting. When okay. you roast vegetables or strawberries yeah. or anything like for in fact like you absorb you sorry you take out excess moisture and you intensify the flavor of whatever you're busy roasting. So these strawberries are bursting with flavor already. So if you're gonna remove the excess moisture content, you're gonna intensify that beautiful strawberry flavor. Oh, okay. So this okay. is gonna go into a bowl. And to help it caramelize, we're gonna go with a little bit of sugar, icing sugar. And we just dust, move those around. That looks good just on its own, Kim, I'm oh, not gonna lie. Absolutely. <laughs> Pop it on a baking tray and you put it in the oven for about half an hour. So, ding, 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 ding. Just like that. Just like right. that. And then it comes out looking beautiful, just like that. And then you also get this beautiful syrup oh, that comes out with it. A beautiful strawberry and is syrup. is that just naturally occurring through the process of what, roasting? Of roasting. That's oh, wow. it. So glossy and beautiful. And we're going to finish this guy up. So I'm going to need to just, I'm going to get some things out the way here because this is really good. This is decadent. When, when you see me clearing space. Okay, yeah, I'm getting excited. Then here. you What's know. Going on? Then you it's know. It's about to go okay, down. Let's you? clear everything out the way. Should I like warm up? And no, 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 no. Yeah. You can, you can <laughs> do a couple of lunges, a couple of, of squats, but it's good. Okay. 
dense, fudgy brownie, and you want it like that. You want to cook it with the yes. center still a little gooey. As it sits, a gooey sets up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to hit it with a little bit of vanilla bean custard. Okay. Okay. I think I think we're going to need some music. Yes. Yeah. Please, please, please. <laughs> Get it on, yeah, butterscotch, brownie. Oh. Okay, that was the first one. That was the first one. Now, Mr. DJ, I'm gonna need some more because it's double the deliciousness today. Oh, no, Mr. DJ. Did. Double the love, double that infusion. Look at them roast strawberry loving. Oh. <laughs> Barry, <laughs> Barry, my friend, <laughs> this is for you, Barry. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um, I, honestly, I think if I need to go out and get this brownie mix and make this for you, um, like next year for my birthday, I want this, please, Ralph. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah? I think we all got you in the studio. Wow. Barry, have a beautiful birthday. All you're missing is the candle on this delicious butterscotch infusion. But if you missed this recipe, check out the recap right now. Mm. It's mm. smelling good. <laughs> Thank you.
Welcome back. This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. It's Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Movie news time now with JP Sebastian, who brings us the latest what's going on in Hollywood and all around the world with the stars. And uh, the first story we're covering is uh, with regards to Ryan Gosling and, and Chris Evans. What, what are they doing, JP? Uh, big shots in Hollywood, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Especially considering, well, the one is Captain America and the other one is exceptionally pretty. <laughs> uh, so they are uh, going to be starring in a new spy franchise. Yeah. Kind of of things. It will be called The Grey Man. And if you're into stuff like the Bourne Supremacy, well, not the Bourne Supremacy, the Bourne, the Bourne series, yes. Bond and all that kind of stuff, it really does look like they're trying to spin off into something brand new at a value of 200 million US dollars. For that's the budget? Yeah, that's a lot of faith in the first of an original idea, you know? Exactly. Like, if, if it was tried and tested, if it was generic, if it was a reboot. million. But they've got directors behind it who are completely trustworthy for a lot of people. That is Anthony and Joe Russo, uh, left and right there. Yes. Uh, obviously the guys who did Endgame, Infinity War. and Oh, okay. They especially blew it out the water for me with Captain America Civil War. I, I, I went in there and I was just like, I'm so tired of superhero movies. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. one came. Honestly, one of the best action movies I've, I've ever seen. So maybe they can... 200 build... million well justified, perhaps. Uh -huh. <laughs> in 2020? <laughs> ROI. How many masks does that buy? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, maybe that's something that's exciting to look out for. I really like, like Ryan Gosling, as you can see. In all the movies he's been in, he's quite dynamic. Uh, like I said, he's pretty as yeah, well. Yeah. Apparently, I do like him a lot more than I knew. And Chris Evans as well. Really a versatile dude, often knives out and stuff like that. Anything regarding, like, you know, what, what are we looking at in terms of what, what, what Grey Man would model? Is it more like a, you, so said, yeah, the, you said more the Bourne uh, yeah, franchise. So, kind so of if you look at like, you know, Captain America gradually went from neon red and, uh, you know, blue colors all the way down to gray yeah, and yeah. black. So it's the grit, I think. Okay, I think okay. we're still hooked to Christopher Nolan's Batman. You know, everything must look like gravel. Everything must look like Saving Private Ryan. And that's not a bad thing necessarily, especially since we're living in the times we live in. Yeah, you know, yeah, it has yeah. to feel like real life, which is hard for a lot of the planet. Uh, so the Grey Man will most likely be like the kind of gritty and the kind of stuff that we saw smaller studios do, well, smaller attempts like Atomic Blonde with Charlie's Okay, Tomorrow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So sharp, punchy. But what's really cool about the Russos is they, re they really seem to do the homework underneath to talk about the CIA question, whether there's a good side to it, <laughs> whether there's definitely a bad side to it, etc., etc. So it will get quite deeply political and, and interesting in that sense too. Very, very interesting stuff. What's the second story you have for us? Second story is uh, very sweet. Uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Do you remember that? Take me back, take me back. Uh, that might be the, the old age cat. Yeah, it's, possibly, it's, it's possibly. It's been 10 years that Michael Cera and a bunch of other people who are now really famous starred in Scott Pilgrim vs. World. Edgar Wright's uh, first, I think, foray into the United States after he had done Hot Fuzz, after he had done you know a bunch of other movies like that. But uh, for their decade anniversary, they decided all to reunite over uh, Zoom yeah. and uh, do a table reading of the entire movie. You can watch it on YouTube. Oh, my charge. goodness. One the hour and 40 movie? minutes they perform this, uh, this movie. And it's really sweet actually to see all these actors. Alison Paul, Satya Baba, Michael Serra, Anna Kendrick, uh, director Edgar Wright, Jason Schwartzman, uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, gorgeous, uh, Ellen <laughs> Young, Chris Evans, of course, who was such a, a cheesy bad guy. Look at that. The job. It's what is so like cute actually was watching them come together after all these years yeah listen to each other's lines and then giggle like oh my goodness I love when, when he did that, that part yeah, so you... like you know it's a, to see that sort of human side behind it. That's amazing. All right, we actually have um, a, a little clip. clip. Yeah, why not? So uh, Leah, as them having uh, shenanigans in the first date scene meeting between Mary Elizabeth Winsett and Michael Cera, who has no game whatsoever. <laughs> and it seems like it's still the case in 2020. <laughs> Scott is acutely aware that his last salon haircut took place exactly 431 days ago, three hours before his big breakup. He's been cutting his own hair ever since. It sounds like a bad time. No, not really. It was. It was a mutual thing. It wasn't. I mean, yeah, she told me it was mutual. She dumped him. It was brutal. What was her name? Well, she was Nat when I knew her, but she stopped liking that name, and then she stopped liking me. Your hair is cute. I like it long. But it'd be cute or short, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> This is brilliant. And all for charity, by the way. For, oh, cool. uh, A charity called Water for People, which they raised 700,000 rand uh, with wow. the help of fans uh, for an hour 40 of their time, um, giving sanitation, fresh water to people all over the world, uh, Central America, Africa, and uh, subcontinent in Asia. 
That's open. absolutely amazing. I've got to watch that. Just even just to, to even see how these people kind of work and perfect their craft. And they're, 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 they're in love with what they make. Like to, to see that with all the, you know, the huge budget movies you see these days, maybe there is some love in the world still for cinema. A lot of love for you, bro. Thank you very much. Is it the hair? Uh, it must be. It was better when it was longer. <laughs> <laughs> So good having JP Sebastian with us this morning, but we also know since the outbreak of COVID-19, stores and shops around the world had to put COVID-19 safety precautions in place. Now, Knox Marfu, our beauty and fashion editor, recently visited the Woolworths store at the V&A waterfront to see what actions Woolworths has put in place to ensure the safety of their customers. Take a look. I'm so excited. I'm at Woolworths Beauty for the first time since lockdown. Let's see what's new. Now, the first thing I'm noticing is that most of the tables don't have samples on it. I would imagine that's got to do with COVID and making sure that we are not infringing on any of the regulations. There are so many new stands here. I'm literally like a kid in a candy store right now. Now for all my Clinique fans, I've got good news for you. These are the new additions to this store. I love the fact that they've got the entire range here from your daily care to your de-aging solutions. But my favorite is the addition of the Hermes stand. My favorite fragrance at the moment is the Twilly Winter Fragrance. It is the perfect gift for that someone special. Now we all know that local is lacquer and I love the fact that Woolworths has a local beauty range. Skin Creamery is a fave with their beautiful oil milk cleanser which has omega oils that just pick up the skin's glow in such a beautiful way. And of course is 100% vegan. Woolworths offers a beauty range of edited choice. We have high-end luxury brands as well as entry-level luxury brands. So your Woolworths beauty experience has something for everyone. We've got the likes of Tom Ford, Clarence, Estee Lauder, as well as our private label brand, W Beauty. We are very proud of our W Beauty private label brand. It's endorsed by Beauty Without Cruelty and is a clean beauty brand, 100% vegan. Now what's Woolworths Beauty without the holy grail product line, W Beauty? Ashika, tell us what's new. G'day, so what's new is because while we're wearing a face mask, we have the new hydrating range that gives moisture back to the skin. Now, Ashika, for all the customers who are going to be coming in, how do you make sure you do a consultation during COVID? Well, let me show you. The safety of our customers, as well as our staff, is of paramount importance to us. We have therefore taken strict COVID protocols and processes are in place in terms of sanitizing. We have removed the testers from the counters for everyone's safety, so customers can request a tester from our beauty consultant. Once we open it, we get a spatula. You can just give your hand because that's where we will be doing the demonstration. So on there, you can just blend it in. And I love the fact that obviously I've sanitized before. Yes. So obviously both our hands are very clean at this yes. stage. I'm feeling very comfortable, which is so important in the store. So this is basically hydrating gel moisturizer. It's going to bring back the moisture and it's going to give you that feel of coolness as well. Now I've been looking for a new foundation. How would I be able to sample some while I'm at the store? So what we do is we take our testers that we have and we get a dramming jar. So we basically just decant it with the color that is correct. Amazing. What we do is we also put down the name of the product and then you will know which color it is the next time you come and purchase. I love this mahogany foundation. I think it's the one for me and I can't wait to try it at home. So definitely in my shopping bag is the amazing foundation and setting spray that I was advised to get. But I need something for my eyes, something that will make it pop under the mask. I'm loving the W Beauty mascara, which is great for volume and just absolute pop in the eyes. But don't just take my word for it. Come through to the Woolworths store and really have a glam and safe experience. Now you're gonna have to excuse me, I need to get glammed up.
let's get glammed. I'm so glad to see that Woolworths is taking the precautions to make sure that you're yeah. safe and that that just puts everyone at ease now knowing that they're doing this and just seeing Knox out there and just giving a review of all the products makes mm. me so safe. The thing is, W Beauty is, it's massive, it's huge. I mean, you walk into that store, it's like a whole shop on its own. So you actually have no excuse for bumping uh, into people and, uh, you know, getting yourself in the line of risk, as it were. But listen, your Feel Good Breakfast Show does continue. On the other side of the break, we're going to be chatting about the gift of the givers and Woolworths Philabag campaign. It's been doing so, so well, and it's all thanks to you, South Africa. Uh, we find out what the numbers are looking like as of today. So stick around for that. Thanks for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. Now, the stranglehold of the COVID-19 pandemic and, of course, the lockdown has left many frustrated and feeling negative, mm. but also has also affected many more citizens uh, more seriously, leaving them jobless and foodless. But thanks to initiatives such as the Woolworths Fill a Bag campaign, we're all able to help those in need in whatever way possible. Now, to update us on the current stats and general progress of the Fill a Bag drive is Woolworths Director of Corporate Affairs, Zin Zinzi Mgolo Dela. Zinzi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us again. Good morning, Tavis. So good morning, Kushe. A very good morning to you. Welcome back. It's so great to have you on the show. We know that Woolworths Fill a Bag campaign is one that is necessary and of utmost importance, particularly during, you know, this time. And we've seen a great response with our viewers, even the children of our own crew members to your Fill a Bag campaign. Could you please update us on the progress of the campaign? You know, um, Tabiso and Kutle were really so close to meeting the 1 million meals target. Mm. Um, we need about 250,000 meals, which is great. South Africa has been great. Our partners, our suppliers, our customers. And it's so heartwarming to see the generosity. Mm. Um, and I want, to do, I want to say that it is time of great need because the virus is peaking, the resources are dwindling, and everyone is feeling financial strained and hunger is at its highest. Mm. It's almost a call for us to come together and share. Mm. Every single Sorry. rand, Zinzi, every single time we report on the numbers here on the show, whenever I see any one rand sort of going higher, that mm. to me is so encouraging because it speaks to the fact that South Africans are definitely listening and mm. they are heeding the call and they are stepping in to help. Uh, but we know that you've been working with the gift of the givers and handing out food parcels since uh, April. It's been about four months now. Why is it still so important uh, for South Africans to keep donating and adding to those rands? You know, um, Tabi, so this, this is becoming really sad. UN, there is a UN report that uh, came out recently on the state of food security and nutrition um, in the planet. Mm. And really it's starting to paint a very bad picture of 130 million uh, people go going into chronic hunger by end of 2020. Wow. But if you bring this a little bit home, yes, definitely. If you bring it home, mm. um, we knew pre-COVID that there were about 30 million people in this country who were going hungry every day. So with everything else that has happened, um, with 
unemployment that is going up. Mm. Um, even if you layer the aspect of uh, schools, we know that there are many of our kids who depend on school nutrition program and they get a very important meal from school mm. and that meal is now missing. Mm. So um, just to help also, Exfam uh, released another report to say um, South Africa is emerging as a hotspot for hunger. So this is very, very real. Mm. I, I, think, I think we look at it as just a campaign, but mm. it's a real need. I can't stress more the growing need for us as a nation to come together and really start to address this pandemic. You know what, Zindi, you just said something that put things into perspective for me. Mm. 13 million South Africans are estimated to go hungry every single day out of a population of 56 million. That's truly alarming and it's truly important, you know, for you to reach the one million meal goal because it's a momentous occasion and achieving it seems more possible every single day. But does that also mean that once we have reached the goal, our efforts are no longer needed? Definitely no. Um, and as I say, 13 million is not acceptable. And with the if with the impact of COVID, you can imagine what has happened to that 13 million. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to go on. So the whole target for 1 million um, uh, meals was just the motivation, mm -hmm. was just to rally everybody and getting everybody excited at a goal, at a target. But I don't see us stopping. We've got a big job. Um, we don't know how far I think the COVID impact is going to take us. Um, there's speculations on, you know, how things, where, where things will start tempering down. But we have a real challenge. And for just 10 rent to provide three meals for a person, mm. um, I just think we as South African can come together, make a difference, um, you know, and, and pull together and share at this time. I feel like it's time for sharing because everyone is financially constrained, mm. um, but we can share. And we've got that, um, you know, deep sense of Ubuntu mm. as a nation and believe we can do this. Mm. It is indeed within our nature as South Africans. We are a sharing, we are a caring and a giving uh, nation. And certainly we can bend together to make this come true. Zinzi mm. Mgolodela, you are fantastic. Thank you very much for the work that you are doing at Woolworths and of course to your partners, such as the gift of the givers. Thank you, Teresa. Thanks, Gutler. Mm, mm. Now, together, we all are able to help and really we can make a difference. Mm. Uh, it's luckily as simple as donating via SnapScan using your banking app or an EFT. But for more information, go on to bullwits.co.za forward slash together we will. And of course, an enormous thank you to uh, Zenzi and of course the greater Woolworths team for your undying efforts mm. and really your willingness to help. It's really humbling to see how South Africans have responded in this way and of course, and bend it together to help fight hunger on all fronts. Stay safe and stay strong, South Africa. Uh, thank you so much, Zinzi. Can we just, I, I know we do this every time we talk about filler bag, but we are so close to achieving that million um, incredible yeah. milestone. But just for everyone who has done something and for the amount that has been raised so far, 2,237,130. Oh. One rank. <laughs> That's amazing, oh, South Africa, man. you beauties, man. How incredible is that, Grant? That's beautiful. And I know everyone's feeling the pinch. So to be able to give and be generous when you yourself are taking strain, that's even more special. So thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Well, time now to enter into the third and final hour of the show. But let's get those news headlines down. It's one minute past eight o'clock on this Wednesday morning. Let's take a final look at the news headlines this morning. On the national news front, the South African Airways Business Rescue Practitioners say they will not be having a meeting this week with creditors as government has met all its requirements for the restructuring of the airline. In a statement, they said the revised rescue plan is now scheduled to go ahead. The plan is, uh, envisages scaling back the airline's fleet and shedding jobs. Meanwhile, Comair Business Rescue Practitioners uh, have asked the creditors to extend the date for the publication of their business rescue plan until the 28th of next month to negotiate short-term bridging funding. 
In other news, in a victory for ESCOM, the High Court has reviewed and set aside a decision by the National Energy Regulator of South Africa to deduct a 69 billion rand equity injection from the power company's allowable revenue for the current three-year period. It instructed instead that the full amount be reinstated to the embattled utilities allowable revenue for the next three years. Now, this means that ESCOM can now apply for higher tariffs. The court ordered that the average standard ESCOM tariffs approved by NERSA to, for the 2021 and 2022 financial year be increased by 11.5 cents per kilowatts each hour. Now, in, on the international news front, Japanese scientists say they have revived microbes that were dormant were in a dormant state for more than 100 million years. The tiny organisms had survived in the South Pacific seabed in sediment that is poor in, in nutrients but has enough oxygen to allow them to live. After incubation by the scientists, the microbes began to eat and multiply. Now, the research has led, was led by the Jap Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology. Researchers say that this new finding shows that living structures such as microbes and bacteria do not have an age limit. The president of the African Development Bank, 60-year-old Akinumi Adeseni, or Adesina rather, has been cleared of corruption charges after a review by an independent panel. This after whistleblowers had accused the flamboyant Nigerian of giving contracts to friends and appointing relatives at the bank. America, one of the bank's largest shareholders, insisted on a new inquiry in April after an internal review cleared him. Now, a charismatic speaker who is known for his elegant suits and bow ties, he has led the bank since 2015 and is said to be re elected for another five-year term in August. And now exciting news regarding a female killer whale. Now, Talika, the killer whale that captured the world's attention in August 2018 when she was spotted carrying and grieving her dead newborn calf for 17 days while she swam some 1,600 kilometers, is pregnant again. At the time, scientists said they'd seen mother whales carry dead babies briefly for parts of a day, but never for so long. Her morning time was a record. Scientists in Washington who made the discovery of Talika's pregnancy while recording drone images of southern resident killer whales are in Related, as it's only the first in three years among the whales. Talika is part of a community of some 72 whales and they frequently encountered off Vancouver Island in Canada and in uh, island marine waters of Washington State. Ken Balcom, senior scientist at the Center for Whale Research, said failures to reproduce are linked to nutrition and access to Chinook salmon, which has drastically declined in recent years. Scientists have warned vessels to stay clear of the whales and grant them space. Canada and the United States list the southern resident killer whales as endangered. And finally, taking a quick look into what's happening to the world of entertainment, the marriage between media personality Kim Kardashian and rapper Kanye West has been dominating headlines recently as they deal with the repercussions of statements Kanye made in recent weeks regarding their children, her family and their relationship, as well as the mental hardships Kanye's 2020 US presidential bid is bringing on him. Now, he has been living in Cody, Wyoming since his first controversial political rally and the couple finally reunited after after Kanye was responsive and agreeable to seeing Kim. Now, the pair had a, tear a tearful conversation in their car while in the drive through of a fast food restaurant. And Kim's trip follows Kanye's public apology to her on Twitter, in which the, he acknowledged that he had hurt her and hadn't protected her like she is doing for him. While Kim is said to still be very upset with Kanye for publicizing their private struggles, she is prioritizing his mental health and well being and plans to do whatever she can to help. Kanye to get to help the help that he needs. Well, that's it for the news at 8 o'clock. Here's one last look at the sporting headlines with Graham. Thanks so much, Kat. Let's wrap up today's headlines, starting with crickets and quite a milestone at that for Stuart Broad, who picked up his 500th test wicket. That's the England claimed a 269 run domination over the West Indies in their third and deciding test to walk away with the series win at the Emirates Old Trafford in Manchester. Broad, who was named man of the match on the day, is only the seventh bowler ever and fourth paceman to reach this incredible milestone. So the West Indies were chasing down a target of 300 
199 for the win, but collapsed at just 129 runs in 37.1 overs. And we'll stay in the UK with rugby news now. British media yesterday reported that Fiji and the 2019 Rugby World Cup hosts Japan will now join the Six Nations sides for an eight-team tournament later this year. The two nations will join England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, France and Italy for a tournament starting on the 14th of November. That's two weeks after the final round of the 2026 Nations competition. And finally, on to football news. A newly crowned La Liga champions Real Madrid yesterday announced that Spanish-born striker Mariano Diaz has tested positive for COVID-19. The 26-year-old is said to be in perfect health, though, and has been complying to the self-isolation rules at home. Los Blancos, of course, won the Spanish League earlier this month and will be back in action next week for the UEFA Champions League round of 16 tie. That's a wrap of your sport for this Wednesday morning. Let's reconnect now with Kutlihoz out in the field in Krugersdorf for the latest on the weather fronts. It's been such an eventful morning here at the Rhino and Lion and uh, Nature Reserve in Kruger's Dope. I've been having the time of my life. I know earlier on I was complaining about the weather, but as you can see for yourself, the sun is coming out, everybody. But now as we get into the final weather report, let's have a recap of the sunrise pictures that we have received from you, our lovely viewers. Um, this one comes from Ulwandile from Motherwell in Port Elizabeth. You shared the stunning bright sunrise. Your temperatures range from 12 degrees, reaching a high of 19. In Goskaku, Ulwandile. Kennedy sends his greeting saying, hey, Expresso team, with his multi-hued skyline um, image ca captured in Port Shepston. Do expect a humid day at 65%, but the overall temperatures range between a low of 12 degrees and a high of 22 degrees. Last and definitely not least, Uwersho made us chuckle a bit and put a smile on our faces with his weather, weather report um, in what sounded like uh, an Australian accent. Thank you all for your contributions because we truly love interacting with you and love it when you guys um, take in on the fun with us right here. But right now, let's have the final look at the weather report. Sikale about news. As I say, Yemen, inclement weather continues to cause havoc in the Middle East as four days of non-stop torrential rains are causing floods, claiming dozens of lives and destroying hundreds of homes in war-torn Yemen. The country's rainy season, which usually occurs from May to September, has been unusually heavy this year. In addition to adverse weather, the country is now also dealing with cholera as well as COVID-19. The UN estimates 24 million Yemens, that is more than 80% of the population, who depend on some form of humanitarian aid or protection for survival. It really does break my heart to report on these tragedies that, you know, other nations are faced with across the globe, particularly because we are all going through a global pandemic that is hot, um, rather life-threatening. So I pray for all of our safety and our well-being. But let's get into the forecast for the rest of our country. The South African Weather Service says it's going to be a fine and cool day across the country. It's a sunny day at a maximum of 20, but starts off at 4 degrees. Wambela, your low is 9 degrees, reaching a high of 28. Pretoria, 421. Johannesburg, 418. In Mahigang, your low is 2 degrees, reaching a high of 21. It's a sunny day at Glegstrop at a low of 2, reaching a high of 20. Kimberley, 22 is your maximum, moving over to Bloemfontein, below 0 at minus 1 reaching a high of 20. Richards Bay, 1226. Is it really winter in Richards Bay? Asking the same question in uh, Peter Maritzburg at a maximum of 25. These are lovely temperatures. Durban as well follows suit with a maximum of 25 for partly cloudy day there. Emzan, Sipayim Tata, 522 are your temperatures for the day. And East London, 920. Cradock starts off at zero, reaching an afternoon temperature of 23. Port Elizabeth, 718. A sunny day at George at a high of 18. And Cape Town starts off the day at 12 degrees, reaching a high of 20. A partly cloudy day. Evusta at a low of 4, reaching a high of 18. Sutherland, minus 4, kicks off the morning for you, reaching a high of 15. Last but not least, Uppington, 6 is your low, reaching a high of 25 degrees. Now remember, whichever part of the country you're in, whatever the weather, make sure to have yourselves a feel-good kind of day. I'm not sure if you guys can see the hippos. Oh, they have disappeared! <laughs> but you'll be sure to keep it locked right here on your feel-good breakfast show as we continue with today's festivities. Oh, 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 we're seeing the hippo. 
God. Seeing it. That is so that cool. That is so cool. It made its uh, TV now, debut right now. It was just like, hi, I'm just here for Expresso, wow. everybody. Like, let me just put my head well, out there. Well, that was there. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kutle. Of course, Kutle is coming to us live from the breeding center at the Rider and Lion uh, Reserve out in Krugersdorp, which is out in Johannesburg. More updates from her a bit later on. Uh, but lots still coming your way, right? Absolutely. We still be go going to be unpacking those entertainment news, a lot of uh, conversation around that. So let us know what your thoughts are with regards to those entertainment news. Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. And we'll see you after these. Okay. So I'm chatting to Umalume Mosa here. He's owned a small clothing factory for years now, and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker, and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping. <laughs> What's better than a sugar-coated, deliciously crispy golden brown donut and 100% Arabica beans brewed to perfection? Treat yourself and warm up your morning with a little sweetness from Mac Cafe with the all-new mini donut and cappuccino offer. A little leaven doesn't have to cost a lot. Great coffee, simple. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Welcome back yet again to your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express on SABC3. Thanks for joining us at the start of a brand new day. Time once again to touch base with JP Sebastian for the latest in the world of movies. What is making news out there and what, who and who is doing. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is launching his hashtag challenge Hollywood initiative. This mm. is what the story is. Yeah, and it's fortunately is more than just a hashtag. You yeah. Know, a lot of these billionaires and millionaires and that kind of stuff, it's like, I wore the t-shirt, <laughs> you know, clout. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But whatever, I suppose, you know, everyone's trying to do their thing in their own way. Michael B. Jordan's way seems very, very concrete. He so what is he doing? Recently, uh, obviously, he partook of the Black Lives Matter protests, where mm -hmm. he gave it Fan, a fantastic speech. Uh, in fact, one of the things he said was so, it resonated really strongly. He said, are you trying to police our storytelling as well? Wow. Mm. And as such, he's focusing and turning his attention to the industry he's in, which is Hollywood. So uh, the Change Hollywood campaign involves a four sort of step process, uh, a round roadmap, which obviously they're going to get more detailed about as time goes along, along with the racial justice advocates outside of Hollywood, which is a great thing. It's not just like, you know, insiders working with insiders. He's working with people on the ground in the street mm. to, one, divest from the police, to um, uh, produce 
actually produce and invest in more anti-racist content, invest in black talent and creators, and invest into black communities. And uh, you know, for if I just use my example as as a critic, the, uh, you know, in the critic field, there it's. Four percent of critics are uh, black people. Uh, that's a very, wow. very poor number. There, so uh, they're, they're, they're obviously very strong and good reasons for this, as well as and this is what's great about this Change Hollywood campaign uh, they, they bring in is not just necessarily the simplistic things, but these hard, tricky questions about the cultural influence of movies, uh, which is where that thing like divest from the police comes in as well. Yeah. We have this culture of propaganda where movies, TV shows, allow cops to do things with impunity. Uh, they're cute scenes, in fact, in comedies where Mark Wahlberg gets to beat up the suspect or something like that. Oh, yeah. And that's yeah, yeah, really yeah, something yeah. that we need to interrogate really carefully. What kind of poisonous stuff are we putting out there and proliferating ideas that cops get to get away with what they like? So uh, Michael B. Jordan trying to work with all sorts of people within and without, which is great. In fact, he tweeted, he said, look, if you've got an idea, if you need help, if you need resources, talk to me. Wow. Uh, really putting himself out there. Absolutely. Much the same as we saw with uh, John Boyega. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great for them. And it's not surprising since, you know, I mean, aside from being a black person, that helps. Michael B. Jordan, obviously, having acted in The Wire, which was so, so analytical and critical about racial, structural uh, racism in the United States. But next, you'll get to see him in that post over there. Which is? A movie called Without Remorse. Funny enough, uh, having act just acted in Just Mercy, which was also about racial justice, uh, this is going to be one of these special forces type things. Hopefully, it takes the angle on, you know, not necessarily glorifying in military imperialism, uh, which seems seems like it's a concern at the front of his mind right now. Yeah, and of course, hashtag challenge Hollywood as well. Um, now, this poster that we're looking at here, uh, Vanilla Ice on the right-hand side featuring a teenage mutant ninja turtle. On the left, is that uh, Does it Franco? Matter? Does it matter? Say the first part again. <laughs> uh, Vanilla, Vanilla Ice <laughs> next to a teenage mutant ninja turtle. Where's the pizza? Great show, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, What's going on no, here? No, SABC3, leave that photo up there. That's all <laughs> like, <laughs> like 2020 can't get weirder. Explain the context. Uh, no, I refuse. Dave Franco is going to be playing Vanilla Ice in the biopic that you have been waiting for your whole life, Kat. Really, I have. I, I mean, after after all the greats that after I've watched. After Ice Ice Baby. After and Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean, I couldn't... <laughs> I couldn't wait for the next great one. This is it, right? Shame. Ah, oh, shame. So, <laughs> wait. Uh, Franco, no, no. Uh, we, he had, so it's an interesting story, at least. Obviously, you've been, well, I'm sure there's so many, like, generation, generation? <laughs> Gen, Gen Z's watching us right now who are like, who is this vanilla ice, you say? Is he a new trap lord? Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, he was so, a really cheesy rapper, shame, who was a bit of a one-hit wonder. But Dave Franco says <laughs> that during lockdown, he's been in conversations with him constantly. He finds that he's a really sweet dude, he's really intelligent, and they're working hand in hand. Yes, they is Vanilla Ice with the the, the Prime Minister of Flavortown himself. And is Zac Efron going to be making a cameo as... Z Z no, that's just Zac Efron doing Robert De Niro, De Niro in Bad Neighbors. In Bad Neighbors, very yeah. Badly. With the the Jixi Cat scene, I love that so much. Uh, that's all I need to say, though. I mean, what more do you want? But, okay, look, what's what's really quite sweet is that uh, Dave Franco previously obviously worked with his, with his brother, James Franco, yes, who are you mm -hmm. looking at there, on The Disaster Artist, which was about Tommy Wiseau. Yes, very made, controversial. Made yeah. one of the worst movies ever made. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Room. And what was really quite sweet about that is they tried to make it heartfelt. It wasn't just dragging the guy, ragging on the guy. Mm -hmm, so I'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that they have the, the, the respect to go, look, it was a weird time, but let's look at the phenomenon of vanilla ice and maybe look at the culture of dragging as well. Like, why are we so mean to people? Like, these raps weren't offensive. Like, yeah. <laughs> sort of. Stop, know, collaborate and listen. Word to your mama. <laughs> um, that's offensive. I'm sorry. <laughs> What does that even mean? <laughs> he said it, not me. <laughs> but okay, eyes. all right. Uh, when, when is that due to come out? Is there any, any data does on it? It doesn't matter. All? It's all in our heads now. <laughs> like, uh, you I'm, can't unsee. unsee. Show the Ninja Turtle. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> How's the turtle rap go? Anyone remembered? <laughs> Don't cut me in our Mr. Director. We're doing the turtle rap. And with that, we wrap up this <laughs> Hollywood news report. <laughs> We're struggling to wake up and get going these cold wintry mornings? Get that first pick-me-up cuppa going to keep moving and motivated for the rest of the day. Warm up your dull moments with Super M this winter. Stop yourself, come on, come on, don't stop yourself. Ah, it's time to bring it back to the kitchen. It's a strawberry fest and a dance fest. Kelly in our kitchen this morning and we're inspiring you and me. I'm getting inspired myself with uh, another winning Super M warm-up filler idea. And there are many of these ideas we've been dishing out. Our Super M strawberry oat warm-up filler recipe makes for a cozy, 
Warm breakfast or tea time drink on those really chilly winter mornings. And who doesn't like that? Uh, a great way to jazz up those boring, bland oats. Now, pay close attention if you're looking uh, for more Super M ideas to stand a chance of winning your share of that 500,000 rand in cash and prizes with Super M. Nicole. Good morning. Good morning. Well, you danced your way into this recipe. Yeah. Uh, and you were just telling me now that it's simple, it's easy, but it's super. Super M filler, gap filler, actually, because mm. we're including oats in this one. So I actually love that take on the little breakfast drink kind of combination. combination. There we go. So if you want to have a drink, but you also want to have breakfast, you can have this because it sort of ticks both. Yes, okay, definitely. I like that. So what okay. we're going to do is we're just going to get our Super M warmed up so long. So you can yep. do this in the microwave or over the stovetop like I'm doing here today. A little bit of the strawberry one and the vanilla. So I'm going to crank up that heat. Mm. So tell me, my dear, do you warm it up or do you boil it? What I, is the trick here? I like to bring it to boiling point. Okay. So that means as soon as it starts to boil it, yeah. then take it off the heat. Okay, cool. You do, like once it's boiled, it's warm. Yes, You don't yes. need to carry on Keep cooking doing it. That. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. That's how I like to do it as well. And I was just checking if that's how you like to do it. Yeah, so we're on the same page yeah. there. So then we've got some strawberries. We're sticking with our beautiful strawberry theme today. Yeah. They smell so good and they fresh. Do. I'm going to add it into a mortal and pestle. So we'd like this. If you don't have one of these, you can easily just use a fork okay. and mash it up. Or you could use your potato masher that you got in the kitchen. Or your hands, you can punch it. You can punch it. What, you know, whatever you... F just make sure you sanitize before the time, yeah, you know? You know me. That's what I do <laughs> all the time. Sanitize. I mean, that's... that's my... Prioritize and sanitize. <laughs> <laughs> Prioritize the sanitizer. Cool. So we're going to add a little bit of honey in here just to add a little bit more of the sweetness. Great. I love using honey in, in strawberries like this. It just makes it almost like a strawberry... Um, Almost like a compote. I don't mm, know if like you know a compote. Jam yes. Of sorts, yeah. Nice. I'm very proud of you. Let's spend so a lot much. of time around you, Nicole. What do you yeah. think all of this is for? <laughs> I'm very proud of something. you. <laughs> cool. So once that's heated up, or well, not completely heated, I just yeah. want to add in the oats as well. Okay. That's just so your oats goes into your super M. Yes. Okay. So that's just going to help it absorb um, the warm mixture, and then it's going to cook it through. So okay. yeah, you don't want it too mushy either. So yeah. just a little bit. Great. Great, so just gonna add this into the bottom of our cup or your mug, mm -hmm. whatever you wanna drink this out of, make sure it's heat proof. Yeah, and ideally you wanna make it uh, a see-through cup if you've got one or a see-through uh, a, a glass if you've got one because it's so pretty to look at. It is so pretty to look at. It would be such a waste if it's all just hidden in a concealed type of uh, container. Yep. And if you want this recipe, go on our website. It's uh, www.expressoshow.com. We've got this recipe with all the ingredients, quick and easy uh, ingredients that you can find there and be inspired. Make this for your loved ones. They will love it. I promise super, you, it's a crowd pleaser, good. this one. So. I can already f um, feel that this is nice and warm. Mm -hmm. So what you're going to do is when you pour this in, you don't want to like gush it in too quickly and too hard because then you're going to kind of like mix everything and you want to ha have that beautiful then, layer. Yeah. 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 So what I do, my tip is just to tilt the mug okay. and pour it in from slowly. The one yeah, from the one side. Because mm -hmm. if you're going to pour straight into the center, yeah. it's just going to mix up all your stuff. And by this point, you, your, your oats obviously has softened up. Uh, and it's gotten to sort of like eating standards, you know what I mean? So it's not going to yes. be like uh, chewy and like, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And you get, um, depends on what oats you use, you get instant oats, you yeah. get rolled oats, and you get like the more steel cut oats. Yeah. So whatever oats you're using, you'll know if it needs a, co a longer cooking yes. time. So you still need to pay attention to that. Mm -hmm. Yours so might not go as quickly as Nicole's uh, has done here. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you just, you need to know, how, I mean, you've got your oats in the yeah. cupboard, you'll know how yeah. long it's going to cook. True, of course. What are you getting in there? What's that? Cream. This is just pure whipped cream mm. just to cut through mm. that sweetness of the, the Super M and the oats and the oh. strawberries. I mean, strawberries and cream is such a great combination. Love, so love, I'm just going to add that on top and there you go. I'm I have to tell you that I do love that you've mixed the vanilla with the strawberry flavors of Super M. I think it just takes the flavor to a new level altogether and you have a new experience altogether of your Super M. But that looks so fantastic and I can't Thank wait you. to get into it. And it's quick and easy to make as well. Um, cheers. Let's just do this, let's just do this like this. I want everybody to see it nicely. You gotta do like a, a COVID cheers on the other side. Mm, cheers, cheers, Nicole. Mm. Mm, tastes so good. Mm. 
Now, here's the thing for you at home to stand the chance of winning your share of that 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes with Super M. Simply follow Super M SA on Facebook or Instagram and upload a photo of yourself enjoying a warmed up Super M with the hashtag warm up filler. And the T's and C's can be found, of course, if in case you miss them. Uh, and of course, you want the step by step guide on how to make this can be found on our website. But in the meantime, we've got a video for you on how to recreate this extravaganza. Take a look. Midnight oil for that last minute cram session? A warm up filler might be just what you need to get yourself back on track and ready to tackle that upcoming exam. Warm up your cold moments with Super M this winter. Are you tired of conference calls, connectivity problems, and need to go on site or be in the boardroom? Well, Mango are soaring the skies once again. As we navigate through this new normal, businesses need to recover, and Mango cares about business. For affordable and reliable business and essential travel, visit www.flymango.com. Go discover more. Go Mango. Book now. Terms and conditions apply. It's my feel-good breakfast show. Uh, welcome back, you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're suffering like me from bush FOMO, which oh, I just bush want to get FOMO. out, I want to be out there in the wild. Kutle has been living her best life this I morning. I know, girl, the nature boy inside me can't get excited <laughs> enough for this one. I'm looking so forward to it. Obviously, we've got lions, we've got rhinos, and they're doing some incredible stuff in Krugersdorp. So let's catch up with Kutle and see what's happening. Kutle! <laughs> 
If you're only joining us right now, where have you been? But we welcome you to the Rhino and Lion Nature Reserve in the cradle of humankind out in Krugersdorp. It has been an eventful morning and I'm so happy that you guys have joined us this morning. We continue the conversation with Mike Finn in what used to be known as the breeding center but has changed to what is known now as the Hippo Walk. That's correct, mm -hmm. personally. Yes. How come is it known as the Hippo Walk? Well, as you've just seen um, a little while ago, mm. we're lucky enough to to have um, a bunch of five hippos here um, in, in our dams. Um, and it's a wonderful place for people just to take a stroll down here mm. and have a look at some of these other species that we've got, mm. the exotic species that we've got. Mm. Um, so it's a lovely spot. It really is a special, a special little area. Truly, truly beautiful with all these majestic animals. <laughs> That lion just laying back, living his best life. I absolutely <laughs> love it. What's his name again? Uh, Rory. Ro what, is he, what is Rory doing now? <laughs> Rory is just catching a bit of sunlight on this chilly morning. <laughs> I love it so much. But um, Mike, back yeah. to our conversation. We're talking about all things conservation. We're talking about all things, you know, um, how a us as human beings engage with animals. I right. know a lot of people are a little bit apprehensive when it comes to zoos and animals being kept, kept in captivity. Sure. Um, how come? Why do you think that is? You know, uh, Kushli, it's a very good question. I, I think um, a lot of people still have that impression of, of a zoo being that, uh, that sort of image of a, of, a, of a bear with a chain around its neck behind mm. some bars and that mm. sort of thing. But uh, that's such an old image. And, and captive animal facilities these days have to have a purpose. They have to have a role. Mm. You can't just have um, animals in captivity for exhibition. Mm. So we've got, to, we've got to all change and we've got to modernize uh, the way that we approach these things. Mm. So um, captive animal facilities need to, as I say, have a role in conservation and education, mm. uh, research, um, and and uh, even even contributing to species management, um, mm. you know, looking after particular species as well and contributing to that. So, you know, we've got thousands of, of school kids that come through here every year. Um, and it's just such a wonderful opportunity. 700 million people go through zoos in the world. Mm. So this is an opportunity where we can actually educate people mm. and engage with them and they can get this emotional con uh, you know, contact with animals mm. rather than that old story of, no, you have to go and pet something mm. or whatever it is. So it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's a great way of engaging with people. Mm. And, and how many youngsters... Or, or adults have an opportunity to come and actually have a look at a white lion. Mm, it's my first see time bird. seeing a white lion. Fantastic. Wow. I mean, it is. It's and they're beautiful. beautiful animals. Mm. They really are. Mm. I mean, we also need to do away, you know, with feeling entitled to animals as human beings. Because yep. at the end of the day, they do need to be allowed the freedom, you know, that they deserve. Because they are wild animals after all. So you've mentioned that these are white lions. Yeah. Why are they specifically white? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not because we wash them. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, firstly, uh, the white lion um, is like that because it has a recessive gene. Mm. Okay. Um, and and uh, the difference is that that recessive gene uh, gives it this lighter color as such. Okay. As opposed to the brown lion or some people call it a tawny lion. Mm. So it's not like an old or anything mm. like that. It is actually a recessive gene. Mm. Uh, first found in the wild, obviously, and then they've been bred in captivity as well. Mm -hmm. But they're just gorgeous. They really are. Originally, they're... where are they from? Um, originally, well, from South Africa. Oh, they are South uh, yeah, African. Yeah, they were found in the Timberbati up mm. in, in the low felt. Um, originally, first seen earlier on in the 19, you know, 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so they, they are still some in the wild. Mm. Uh, but, but really... Uh, yeah, lovely animals. We're very privileged to have them. Truly, truly lovely animals. But there's one more animal that I want to lay my eyes on. And I'm not sure if he's around, Mike. The Siberian he's, tiger. They, he's just being very shy this mm. morning. There's, we've got two uh, uh, Siberian tigers in here with their cubs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, again, we're really privileged to have, have cubs with, um, with us. Um, mm. You know, the Siberian tiger is the largest of all the the big cats, oh, you know, wow. um, and a magnificent creature. So mm. again, you know, because there's only sort of, um, uh, I think, around about 500 in the wild, 
um, you know, left, you mm. know, sort of thing. So we're privileged to be able to contribute to that. So with 500 in the wild, are they rare or endangered? Um, they're, they're rare, they're, they're, and, and uh, it is an endangered species, obviously, because they're, they're threatened, you mm. know. Their mm. existence is threatened. Mm. You know, the more we encroach on their habitat and, 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 and um, the more uh, interference, let's say, we have, these species withdraw. Mm. Um, and their, their, their areas get smaller and smaller. Mm. And that's what we've got to be careful about, and we have to protect them. Mm. Truly, we have to protect um, our nature. It's all about conservation. It's all about sustainability and sustainable development at large. Mike Finn, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It it's has been such a pleasure having you, pleasure. I'm pretty sure everyone at home also had so much fun learning about the nature reserve. Don't you worry, because tomorrow I will be back right here to report live to be learning about some of the birds that are around yeah. the area. That's yeah. truly exciting. But for now, keep it locked right here on your Feel Good Breakfast show, Expresso, but from myself and Mike. Thanks, and Chris Beautiful Leo. white lions. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much, Scooter. That was awesome stuff. Great content there from uh, the Lion Park. Really enjoyed that. But you know what I've also been enjoying is our sessions here in the kitchen where thanks to Chef Clem, to Nicole and Kelly and the entire team, we've been learning so much and just been getting great inspiration with so many ingredients, so many different recipes. It's just been absolutely... Sorry, what? sorry, that's me. We're sorry. at a live show. Whose phone sorry. is that? Sorry, sorry, what? that's for me, guys. That's for me. What, do you... what is that? Uh, hi, Corin. How are you doing? Corin? Of course I can help you. So your cake's been in the oven for how long now? <laughs> Two hours. What? Sorry, sorry, Kat. The cake's been in the, in the, in the oven. Uh, Corin, if the cake's been in the oven for two hours, is the oven it's... on? Wait, hello. Ah, uh, okay, Corin. That's the problem. Wait, no hello. worries. Anytime. Always here. <laughs> sorry, sorry. That was just that was just Wait. Corin calling is... me on my special hotline. Is this what I think it is? Is it? Does what? this mean what I think it means? We're the Kelly Hotline Bloggers Bank! <laughs> Call us on your cell phone. Culinary Hotline Bling! That can only mean one thing. Oh, what? Oh. what? No way! It's back! The Culinary Hotline Bling is back! It's amazing. Okay, okay, now I'm excited. Yes. Now I'm yes. super excited. Okay, so this means that you can go onto our Expresso Facebook page, ask all of your culinary conundrums that are confounding you right now, and of course we'll answer them. We'll, uh, we, you, we can have your question answered live on air. And if you call us live right now uh, on 021-110-5552, we'll get your number and we'll call you back. Yes. Okay? And then we'll answer your yes. questions live on air. Yes. That is amazing. Culinary Hotline is back. It's more golden. It's more brown. It's more delicious. What? I'm so, so we excited. must get down. I'm so excited. So we must yes. get down. Yes. Give us a call. That number once again, 021-110-5552. I'm so excited. Super awesome news. The Culinary Hotline bling is back. And when we come back from the break, also, we're catching up with Kelly Kualo. What a day. Whoa. It's a Wednesday. <laughs> Warm up your winter with Super M by winning your share of 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes. Whether you need a morning pick-me-up, a midnight snack, or a study cram filler, buy any Super M, follow Super M SA on Instagram or Facebook, upload a photo of you enjoying a warmed-up Super M, and use the hashtag warm-up filler to stand a chance of winning your share of that 500,000 Rand in cash and prizes.
you're still with your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso here on SABC3. We're setting up all sorts of feel good and who better to give more of that feel good than our next guest, Kelly Kumalo, who was first discovered while performing at a gospel star search in 2003. And fast forward to today, she's a two-time South African Music Award nominee and a winner of a Metro FM Award. She's done so well, but she's still putting in the work amidst the chaos of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we recently heard her latest single, Empini, uh, we got her on the line. We had to get her on the line. There was no other way. And she's on the line right now via video call. Kelly Kumalo, good morning. Morning. How are you? Ah, oh, fantastic. Good. You, you're on the road. Where are you off to? I'm on my way to shooting an opening uh, sequence for my reality show. Oh, Queen. get in there. Come Queen. on, serving us. It's so good that you're talking about this because we know now during this time, you know, the arts and entertainment industries have carried a lot of people through this pandemic. However, many artists are feeling the pinch as a result of the lockdown. How have you been keeping your head above water during this time? My, it's been crazy. It's been really tough. Being at home and uh, homeschooling and not being able to work the way that I would want to has been really tough. And also just releasing music and not be able to do proper photo shoots mm -hmm. due to social distancing and, uh, you know, the restrictions. It's been really tough. Mm -hmm. But we know that you released your uh, latest track, even with all of these hard times, obviously consuming so many of us. Mpini uh, was released during lockdown. It's a love anthem which embraces the hardships and triumphs in relationships. And I think it's, it's such an important uh, thing to pay attention to. But it's about a strong woman who conquered everything that was meant to destroy. Please tell me more about this, uh, this track. What inspired you to write this song? behind it and uh, when Monty and I were in studio we wanted to you know give people hope that no matter what we go through no matter what wars that we go through we will conquer as long as we uh, stay positive and stay focused and I think that there's so many angles from which to approach the song for example in times like these where mental health conversations are coming onto the surface people struggling so much with all sorts of uh, mental challenges uh, it's very very important has that been a key focus for you in, in the process to making this song? I think when you look at Mpini, it's not just about uh, me as a person. It's a, it's a very broad message. It's about wars that we go through on a daily basis, on a day-to-day -day basis. It could be in our relationship space. It could be gender-based violence. Mm. It could be the, the COVID-19 pandemic. It could be the mental illness. The list is endless and the message is quite broad. Kelly, now we know, you know, the demands that come with being a musician often come with less time to take on other work or pick up new talents in order to di diversify. Are there maybe any new skills you've picked up over this period of time? Maybe some cooking, anything? Um, not necessarily musically, but personally, yes. I've been doing a lot of personal work in terms of, you know, healing. Mm. and uh, finding peace with everything I've been through in my life since childhood, which I have not been able to do with my busy lives. And, and I feel like COVID, uh, this pandemic has somehow fa uh, forced us um, to face who we are and, and really, you know, do some self-work, find out whether we like who we are, what can we improve as well. Now, Kelly, the lockdown period has been a good bonding period for many families. What have you and the kids been getting up to? <laughs> We've been fighting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what do you fight about? Sleeping patterns are messed up. But what uh, we've been doing quite a lot is bonding and, and getting to know each other more. And um, I mean, what their struggles as my kids, what are my struggles as a parent? So it's been quite a, a very personal time in mm. terms of a family. Yeah. What about homeschooling? Because that is something that so many parents are like, honey child, I need a break. I just need to get out. How have you been coping with that and, you know, just learning new things from the kids as well? I hate homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> You're not it is that one. simple. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to make it look fancy and all that. I hate the process. 
And it's been really tough because now my kids hate me because <laughs> now we are forever fighting over things. I mean, I'm not coping. I'm not going to lie. I'm not coping. Hence, I'm even thinking of just pulling them out of school. We'll start again next year. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, I'm sure that that's a sentiment a lot of parents share out there. I, I, I promise you, your kids don't hate you. They they act like they do, but they actually really just do love you. But it also shows you just how important teachers are. <laughs> teachers really? just, they are so, so important. Uh, here's Ju the month of July now. Uh, you know, we celebrate Tata uh, Nelson Mandela. Uh, what ways has he inspired your life today? Forgiveness. Mm. Mm. I think... Dada is one of the people who understood the philosophy of forgiveness. And if it wasn't for that, I don't think we would be where we are as a country or as young black people. Mm -hmm. So I look at him and I think, Kelly, you want to learn how to forgive, which is not an easy thing to do. Mm. Kelly Kamala, you have been dropping gems on us, on us this morning. Mm. Forgiveness. Also, we get to see this real side of you where you're like, listen, it's not easy being a mother during this time. But thank you so much. We are certainly looking forward to your reality show and you just doing the most. But I know you have a lot of things to do, so we're going to let you go out there. But thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much. It's been quite a pleasure. Uh, Kelly Kumala, she is fantastic. I love her. Now, we know that times may still be uncertain for a lot of people out there, but that hasn't stopped artists like Kelly Kumalo from pursuing their dreams and giving fans music to make the lockdown feel even more bearable. But you might want to download Mbini and add it onto one of your uh, lockdown playlists because you're going to thank us later. Trust me. Oh, we love Kelly Kamala. Good luck as well with yeah. the new series. I think a reality show is going to be very revealing. Yeah, it's going to be really, really, really cool. But, um, <laughs> uh, such a huge motivational force here in SA. We love her. Thank you so much for taking the time to uh, connect a, a nice enlightening chat with a powerhouse that is Kelly Kamala about female empowerment, especially amidst um, of our trend of hashtag woman supporting woman, the Instagram challenge. Absolutely love it. Seeing so many beautiful pictures out there. So well done to all ladies involved in the challenge and obviously August will be Women's uh, Month here in South Africa yeah. so a great opportunity to continue that trend. Perfect timing indeed. Now another female musician Graham and businesswoman who has emphatically made her mark in the industry and in pop culture is the inimitable Miss Robin Rihanna Fenty. Now he, she's a professional a and a personal growth uh, throughout her career has molded the outspoken self-possessed and unapologetically fierce female she is today and we stand a queen and she once had the following to say. Nah, she is fierce. <laughs> nah, she's, she epitomizes fierce for me. There's something so special about a woman who dominates in a man's world. It takes a certain grace, strength, intelligence, fearlessness and a nerve to never take no for an answer. Oh, I love it, man. Indeed. And she's proven that. So if you want to believe those words, believe it because she has proven it in her life, in mm. her career, in her personal life as well. Rihanna, thank you for inspiring us and I uh, look forward to uh, being inspired by many more powerful mm. women, certainly South African women here over the month of August.
Well, welcome back, you beautiful people. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So just in time to catch uh, up with what's happening in the world of entertainment, both locally and internationally. And you guys have the scoop, eh? Absolutely. If we say we got the scoop. We do have the latest, though. Yeah. Uh, in what we reported on early on in the news bulletin, we reported that the disgraced Ellen DeGeneres show is under investigation by its parent distribution company following a scathing expose that revealed that the host's true mean spirit nature as well as a toxic work environment with uh, reports of fear and intimidation and racism within and you can see some of those experts over there saying they definitely don't practice what they preach with the be kind mantra and uh, at the moment uh, as we also reported on in the news is that Ellen herself has not yet um, replied or had anything to say to the media uh, regarding all of these allegations and exposés and so on and so forth so I guess the topic of discussion mm. here is obviously the disappointment that fans all around the world might feel um, as a result of this. I mean, it is a very feel-good show. Yes, yes. Um, at the end of the show, you always get that, you know, be kind to one another kind yeah. of thing, and you feel like light-hearted and ready yeah. to go, and people are saying, well, the portrayal of that be kind uh, nature is not who she really is so or what the show screen. is really is. I'm trying to look also just, you know, balance what we've been reading yes. versus what we know. Yeah. Uh, there'll, but there'll be a lot of talk about that for sure. There certainly will be. I think that this one's going to be a big, big conversation uh, everywhere. Um, you know, when this sort of thing does come out, you, you don't know what stance to take because sometimes, and it does happen, and I'm not taking anyone's side just yet, but sometimes it does happen that one person might experience you differently uh, to what everybody else experiences. So uh, maybe you weren't so kind to one person or a group of people. They may have received you in a not so kind manner. I, I don't want to rule that this is exactly what the energy and the atmosphere is of the person uh, in, 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 their, in their entirety, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the same as that, not to take her side or anything, but she's also been a female in this very uh, male dominant space so maybe I think that for her being in the space this is her way of outlet you know mm. she's kind of ha having to be like firm mm. and like to the point and yeah. just address things you can't be friendly with everyone maybe earlier in her life she was friendly she was accommodating mm. um, and now obviously she's in yeah. a space where she has to be a bit more direct and yeah. maybe that comes off as mean um, so yeah and yeah, also we are like living in an, an age of, 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 of a sort of outrage culture and we don't know what toxicity means to people and so we shouldn't also be, I suppose, uh, sort of uh, 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 toxicity apologists, mm. in, 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 you know, if there was such a thing. Uh, but it's, it's something to, to, to watch closely. One of the things that's, uh, that's also said here is that she's not the problem. Uh, while Ellen, Ellen is reportedly mean, it's most of senior producers that are bearing the brunt of the allegations, but employees are upset that she has never seemed to bother to probe into these problems. Ah. So kind of supporting that mm. culture. And there are also mm. rumors swirling around that the show might be pulled off air completely. No. Uh, oh. and, and the question of will the Ellen show be the same ever again? Are you saying no, it shouldn't be pulled off? I think it shouldn't be pulled off. I think that people shouldn't be quick to cancel when things go wrong and things don't go in the way that we want them to. I think that there's an opportunity here to have an, uh, a conversation. There's an opportunity here for this to be a teaching moment mm. for everybody in that space. Um, and yeah, no, I don't think that it should be uh, pulled off. I think that everyone can learn from this experience if it's dealt and handled uh, correctly. All right, what about that second story? Do we have time for it? Listen, um, it's, it's, it's a conversation as well. We also know that um, Kim Kardashian and uh, Kanye West is now reunited after his uh, mental state. Uh, but we are going to delve into that again uh, some more tomorrow again for entertainment news because we don't have time that. Mm. But we've also been hearing a lot about Kelly Kumalo this morning. And while we are so proud of her latest single, Impini, we had to take it back to November 29 when she released her music video. And you know the name for it because it, it's, it's, a, it's a big one. It's <laughs> absolutely fantastic. It is a, a big one. It's called Onditata Ganingni that's been out and everybody's been going on about it and talking about it. We did have a chat a bit earlier on with Kelly Kumalo. So if you're wanting to get a dose of that, you certainly can watch it on her social media. I'm sure that she will have uh, posted it on there. In fact, it is playing right now. Always find a way to take it in my stride. It's just my pride. Like a pile of salt in the rain 
Your words carry a sting I can't explain Cannot name this up and down intangible Suffocating invisible Cold that still made to make me less On the tatar and me your prize If all the ways you love me shrink me Can I stay where there's no place for me to thrive Can't reconcile this up and down intentional suffocating invisible Call that cellar Expresso Show Made with Love by Clover uh, Never Feel Good Production <laughs> 